Well, it's a little different. She, it's about the same song. It's a little different. Is he trying to get a, it was updated. another spin by saying that was different? Well, you know. A all... couple of words changed doesn't uh, make the whole song different. That's uh, like a... Why are the mics all I'm, weird I'm today? I'm feeding back or something. Oh, man. Today's not the day to have any technical problems whatsoever. Oh. No. You hear that, though? Yeah. It's on the verge of feedback. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. It's my mic. I'll hit mine, too. What is it? Oh, it's what? Be- oh, it's because Patrice uh, doesn't have his headphones on. Oh, is that what it was? It all was right, all right. Feeding back. All right. Headphones? Everyone came running in and, in a panic, and they uh, turned down your headphones. Sort of freaking out. Motherfuckers really will throw a motherfucker under the bus. Oh, yeah. It really was you, though, bro. You could've, could've, could've not said that. You could have said it was E-Rock. That's the nah, thing. That's what uh, everybody does here. It's the, <laughs> the finger, the finger of blame. Points. Yeah, how long have you been doing the show just with bl- us? You haven't figured E-Rock. that out yet? <laughs> Even if something might be good, people aren't willing to take the chance that it it might be good. So whenever somebody comes up with something, it's like, oh, a uh, bit was brought in. I think Stan found this. And then Stan will be like, no, actually, uh, E-Rock originally brought it in. Well, Steve oh. uh, did that. Because they're so petrified that we're going to play and go, this is so bad. After you berate uh, poor Kunta Kinte yesterday, this poor kid is shaking in his dumb shoes. You gotta keep him. You gotta keep him <laughs> beating shaking. like a dirty you slave. You gotta keep him scared. You couldn't see him, but the kid was really just standing there shaking. He was literally shaking. Yeah. Oh my keep, God. Keep them petrified. How much do we pay you? Uh, nothing. Like, <laughs> you should never say that with, with like less pride than nothing, motherfucker. That's why you shouldn't be yelling at me, nigga. Yell at them and they will fear you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Master Commander. We're, uh, it. we're here. It's the only virus spreading across America yeah. thanks to XM Satellite Radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, the, that was the updated version of the song. Uh huh. It's from Rich Voss's friend, by the way. Is it? Yeah. I don't believe it already. And I think he's working on a third version when David Lee Roth walks down the sidewalk today. <laughs> yeah, and it's the same song with three words changed. Right, exactly. Come on, dude. You're going to do a new version of it. I want a completely new song. It's perfect, though, because it's like a one-hit wonder band. Yeah. You know, you get the one-hit wonder, and then they try the follow-up pit. And, and it just sounds sli- exactly like yeah, it. Yeah, just slightly different. A little sideways. It's just twisted a little bit. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, where do we begin? Where do we begin? Where do we begin? Uh, how about with this? The blue folder. The blue folder that you're showing to Pal Talk? I had to bring it in. Uh, uh, all I know, hey, all I know is uh, last night, I get a call from Opie. It's about uh, 9 o'clock or so. Tops. Tops. Now, things are going on. Mm-hmm. I think it's easy uh, to assume things are going on. Business ventures things that in t- uh, include uh, us, uh, Super Agent Bob Eatman is involved. Lots of lawyers. Yeah, lots of lawyers. So I'm on the phone. I, I got my cell phone I'm on the-, on the computer and my regular home phone. And uh, what's the matter, Derek? Is-, is there a problem that I should be concerned with? It's his headphones. The seat. Derek jumped out of his seat. Patrice's headphones again? Yeah. Like, if they're not on, that's, it fucks it up? If they're not on your head, the volume has to be all the way off, or else it feeds back through your microphone. Well, you could just, like, the, unplug right. it until you need the headphones. That's all. Yeah. Just, that's true, too. You can just know unplug this. it. All right. Go yeah. ahead. All Sorry right. to interrupt. It's called <laughs> feedback. That's all right. So, so yeah, I, I'm on the phone uh, with, with all kinds of people. And then, uh, at about 9 o'clock, I get a call from Opie. Now, we're expecting things... Like, but faxes. Can you set this up better for the uh, maybe the newer listeners? Uh huh. I used to be the responsible. Oh, oh, one. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I was definitely going to get to that. All right, all right, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, Opie was was the one that pretty much TCB. You were the TCB guy taking care of business uh, before we got Super Agent Bob Eatman. It was uh, Opie. Doing like all the negotiating and talking with uh, management and everything. I was a hell of a negotiator. Hell too. of a negotiator. I got you twenty eight thousand, and your- when I got me that twenty eight grand, <laughs> 28, no, not 000. a twenty eight thousand dollar raise. <laughs> I got twenty eight thousand dollars a year. I got you a twenty eight thousand dollar contract. Thank you. And I got myself forty at the time, <laughs> and we would sit across. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. We, we we would sit across from uh, uh, uh from Shbubi. 
from Booby, Brucey e. Mittman, and he would write a figure. This would happen like every year or so when we would renegotiate because we didn't have an agent. So we'd write a figure on a piece of paper at this Chinese buffet that he would take us to. And like he so, must have seen it in a movie. He'd slide it across <laughs> the table upside Hold, down. You're missing something, though. Uh, he would berate us, though, for an hour first. Yeah. First, there was the yelling at us and why our show Patrice, sucks. Patrice, yelling it can at be us better. at a Chinese buffet. <laughs> what we did wrong, and how it, we almost got fired. And it was like, supposed to be our, our big afternoon out. We're going out with the boss. He's going to take us to a really nice restaurant, and then he's going to give us a nice raise, right? Yeah. Well, it started at a, a Chinese buffet, and uh, it started with a lot of berating. Like yeah. just screaming and yelling how awful we are and how we're this close to being fired and if we don't get our act together we're out the door yeah. blah 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 blah. It was his knock us down now so he can justify what he's sliding <laughs> what across he's the table. Do. So he slides the, slides the little thing across the table upside what, down with his middle finger. Yeah. Uh, here are the figures that I you figured out, boys. And, and the other fingers are here. pointing up. And as it's going, yeah, all the other fingers up, middle finger down, and. And all he would say is, this is all we have in the budget, too, so it's non-negotiable. This, this is my final offer. Final offer. My first and boys. final offer. Deal or oh, no, no deal, deal boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I got the piece of paper, and I, like, I flip it open, uh, over, and it's, it's for $2,000. <laughs> $2,000 raise. And at this point, we're like just. I'm making kicking twenty. I was making twenty eight. You rounded up. It was twenty seven five. Twenty seven five. Making. That's right. Yeah. So now I would be making twenty nine five. Twenty nine five. It, the, the bastard uh, couldn't even round it up to thirty. Round it up to thirty. Thirty you sounds son of a bitch. so much better than twenty nine five. Wait a minute. Wait a minute though. You was happy. Yeah. Now. And, no, no. And wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, was at finally what starting point, to change. That's what I'm saying. At what point? Yeah. Did you fucking get savvy, Mr. Only $2,000? This was I after a while of listening to Opie. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> now, you got to remember, because, it, it, you know, this is the current time, obviously. But back in the day, I, I, I kind of taught Anthony the whole radio business. I was right? just happy to and be there. Were, there were times happy there, to be there. There were times there, they would treat us you know, like shit. I'm like, all right, Anthony, that's... That's it. We're out of here. But, but we just started our radio <laughs> show. But Opie, I don't I'll give a shit. We're out of here. I'll find us another. But, 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 but Opie, I bet you could find you another job. <laughs> I bet I'm back in the attic. Was there ever a fucking time in you guys' relationship where you almost or you almost go where it was where the Ann was gone and no Ann? This fucking like nah. where you might have went. You might have went, oh, my God, dude, I, I can't do it. Uh, or you go, not Anthony. E uh, we know uh, Not we, even close. Yeah, we know what we got together, so. Mm -hmm. No. We butted heads on a few issues, but nothing even big enough to, to even mention. So the 29, was you, d did you, now, is this, are you like going 2,000 in hindsight, or did you say 2,000 then, like, two, no, motherfucker? He, here's no, no, what here the problem is. is. Yeah. When we went there, I'm expecting at least five. When you expect something... And then you turn over and see, like, less than half of that. It was like, and just the way he presented it. Like, it was, it was the whole package, Patrice. He, a, a, a savvy, sharp guy probably could have sold me that two grand like it was ten. Yeah. You know? But this smarmy Brucey, and, and believe me. He didn't me, even believe in it. Believe in me, the race. I love the guy. That, yeah. That's he had why no he, confidence. He had no confidence. Because that's why he beat us down thinking that'll help. Right. He beats us, hoping that's not still gonna... around. This guy. Oh yeah, we love him. Don't get us wrong. Now that we don't work for him it's... anymore, he is a pisser. We love going out, hanging out with him whenever we do get the chance. We, we have like a love hate relationship much, with but the guy. Now that we don't work for him, I love hanging out and you know rehashing old stories. The guy was a pisser. Look, here's the deal. Uh, speaking of uh, Brucey e. Mittman, is yeah, he boy. still around? Boy. Now this is just a, an email I got uh -huh. that I will not be commenting on. But All Bruce right. Mittman did uh, write to me last night. Subject: Welcome back. Wonder what Howard is thinking today. Best of luck. Still want to have dinner. Uh, kill WAF, will ya? All my best, Bruce. Jesus. So he's still in our lives. And he, Boys. He keeps touch. Boys. Yeah, he, he slips that thing over. And uh, it, it was the... Um we were talking about like who's taking care of business. Opie was pretty much, you know, the taking care of business guy uh, back then. Uh, N.E.W. very much in that. You you had uh, strong relationships with uh, Ken Stevens, 
uh, Tim Sabian over at YSP, and I was pretty Oedipus, much Oedipus, Oedipus up at BCN, on. right? And I was pretty much, you know, hey, can someone get me a, a Sam Adams? Can someone get me a goddamn and, uh, beer. Uh, I'm just hanging out, doing the show, the time of my life, enjoying myself. Uh, we get the boot, and like things just happened, and kind of when we came back here now to XM, there was like not a role reversal, but just. Things have changed. Opie has calmed down a bit. There's been a shift. There's been a shift. <laughs> there's been a shift. You know when there's a lane closure, <laughs> it's bad, but then there's a lane shift. People still slow down, but it really, it's still the same. It's, but we're still going down the highway. There's been a shift. I'm and up. I all of a sudden have, have <laughs> inherited certain responsibilities that I never really had. I still don't like dealing with management, although I have to. I don't like doing any of the talking. I'm still right in there, though. Yeah, I really am. You're in there, but I've I. Uh, I'm, but I'm... you're more of a laid back. <laughs> like I'm the the second a bill comes in, like I pay that fucking thing immediately. I don't care what the due date is on it or anything. That's me. Uh, I do it all myself. Ope is still bills and Manila envelopes, sending them off to Daddy Bob, because I yeah. don't know what the hell is going on. Things are always getting confused. I hear from, we, we share a financial guy, and he doesn't tell me any intimate details about that, but he goes, could you tell your partner to maybe give me a call? Because we have to talk about, you know, insurance and things like that. He used to say that about you, you know. I know. See, that's what I mean. It's slowly shifted. And I almost made him puke the other day. Where he's over my house, and he goes, I couldn't believe when you called my secretary to confirm this appointment. <laughs> like, I called up his office to confirm that... You know how it bad it's on. gotten? Uh, I kind of have, not kind of, I have the last three paychecks that Bob sends yeah. that we're so, supposed to put in in the bank. Right. Just laying in my you apartment. Asshole. <laughs> you know what kind of interest you're losing? I know. Did you have a money manager account yet? <laughs> or are you still putting all your money in a checking account? <laughs> no, no, I got, uh, I got a few <laughs> accounts, but it's kind of like... Um, you don't have direct deposit, though, with that? No, no. It's kind of like... It's kinda like it's kind of oh. like Chevy Chase and Caddyshack. I just got checks keep, laying keep it. Now. Keep it. <laughs> this is a check for fifty thousand dollars. Keep it. I don't know. My priorities have changed in the last couple of years. Yeah, so. you're 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 a lot more relaxed. Mm -hmm. See, that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, the bad thing is, um, I have to deal with certain things. That's right. But it's okay. And uh, last night. Nine o'clock, Opie calls. All hell is breaking loose once again. Yeah. Phone calls. Uh, I'm I'm talking to people I never thought I would talk to in my life. Right. Lawyers are calling. You guys negotiated calling. this deal? Huh? You guys did this deal? What deal? There ain't no deal. The the, X, <laughs> the XM deal from no, no, two years ago. Super Agent Bobby. No, Bob's been in our life for uh, over ten years since now. we got the boot from AAF. Bob oh yeah, okay. Eatman has Not been, over ten years, right? Been the guy about seven, eight. Pretty years. close. Um. So, yeah, he's been the guy that uh, does all the stuff. So I'm on the phone with Bob. And uh, I, I get a call from Opie, though, before all this at about 9 o'clock. And we're talking about, you know, things that are going on. And, and apparently we're supposed to get some things faxed to us. Now, Opie, in his infinite wisdom, has decided against the fax machine. <laughs> I don't... I, 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 do you know printer faxes and everything? Go for, they're so cheap now and so easy to plug into your computer, USB. Boom, you're in. You load up the software. You now have a printer, a scanner, a fax machine. It, it, go to CompUSA today and please just no, get one. No, my brother gave me a, um, a printer and Wait, fax machine. So you have one. It's in a box. <laughs> it's in a box. Of it's course it is. It's in a box and it's been in my living room for two to three weeks. And that's where my paychecks are sitting on. <laughs> so you gotta open it and hook it up because I don't, I'm, I don't want people to think I live like a slob. It's not that no, slob. There's nothing to throw around to look slovenly. Yeah, no, I'm I'm not. You know, I'm not a slob. It's just these, you know, things I should be taking care of. You I, live I, like I, I just get to eventually. You live like a guy on the lamb. I'm starting to live. Is what you do. You, you're just like you're in an empty room. Minimalist. It's like one of those boiler room scenarios. A phone and a computer, and you're scamming people out of their credit card numbers. <laughs> I kind of always wanted to be a hippie, I think. Is that it? <laughs> so I decided this. <laughs> you're a minimalist. Uh, well, you're nothing a list. 
But my brother got some kind of printer and had a problem with the company, and uh, they sent him another one, and they wanted the one they sent him back, and he says, fuck them, take mm. that one. So I got one now. All right. Well, hook it up. But anyway. So, yeah, 9 o'clock, I'm, uh, Bob, Bob is on the phone with me, and uh, apparently right then and there, things had to be done. Uh, he goes, all right, I'm emailing you some uh, paperwork, print it out, uh, <laughs> sign a few things, and then fax it to this number. I'm like, okay, that's easy enough. He goes, where's your, your partner? Oh, he's asleep, and he's shut off his phone. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the last I heard from Opie at 9. Now, 9.30, Bob calls me, and I have to tell him that Opie is home asleep with his phone off. Unreachable. Unreachable. I got lawyers on one phone, Bob on the other, no Opie. I have Goes there any way to wake him up? I go, I don't know. You might be able to call Ben. He can knock on his door. No. I have different... Uh, my responsibilities have changed. Yeah. I, they called at five and said, look, uh, you're going to be around for the, you know, near a fax couple machine hours, or a printer said. or whatever yeah. uh, in the next couple hours. I mm -hmm. waited till nine and I was tired. We had a long day. <laughs> We had to have top secret meetings in the middle of nowhere, and all sorts of weird things were going yeah. on yesterday. Well, this certainly wasn't the scenario I had in my head. Was walking downstairs into my little office in my underwear, scratching because I was in bed, uh, flipping the light on, fa printing out a bunch of papers, and signing things like with sleepies in my eyes, in my in my undies. That was that. That's the big thing. Damn, Not man. getting a, a you know, it, it, isn't it supposed to be some kind of gold pen? <laughs> I want to be. I want to be like an athlete. How the athletes do it. Yeah. I want to be wearing the the uniform. Yeah. What the hell? Bob on one phone. Instead, I'm getting yelled at. Scratching my balls, signing papers, waiting. Opie's asleep. Opie's asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. So then I get this Wait, from Bob. I just want to stress that once again. Mm -hmm. Probably the biggest day in our radio careers. One and, of them at least. And I'm asleep. And you're asleep at the wheel. And that's my new thing too. When I, it's time to sleep, it's sleep time. You go to sleep. Turn I, used off to, the phone. I used to keep my phone on. People would wake me up in the middle of the night because this business had to be taken care of or this had to be taken care of. Not anymore. No. When it's sleep time... Turn off all the phones. It's sleep time. It's sleep time, yes. So I'm doing it. And then now Bob and uh, some of the lawyers are getting to know the dynamic here now. They're seeing the lane shift because Bob then tells me, uh, Anthony, um, could you also, I'll email you Opie's um, stuff, and could you print all of it out and bring it in to him tomorrow morning? So now, instead of having to get Opie to go to a Kinko's or something to get his faxes, I'm there printing out 8 million pages. I had to reload my fax machine with paper uh, at 11 o'clock at night. Now you know what I had to deal with for years. You never did that at 11 o'clock at night. You, you were more the inter-office guy. Once you got home, you took a lot of phone calls and stuff. Right, right. But 11 o'clock at night, I'm, well, I'm and loading that's, up paper. And that's why I had to turn off the phones, because I need my sleeper. I can't do this radio show. And you knew and you would have had to go to Kinko's. yesterday was a crazy day. Or, or down to the... Actually, you would have had to... Here was Opie's plan. You were going to come from your apartment to here. Yeah. To the XM Studios yeah. to get a fax. <laughs> and when you told me it was like... 50 pages or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, I would have been livid. Even oh. though it's supposed to be a, you know, a, a great day, I would have been livid. And you were pretty livid this morning, by the way. Oh, well, that's because I I then you almost had threw to... the fax machine across the room. Well, first of all, I had to deal with you on the couch. I'm handing him papers. Sign this here, line 3, <laughs> right there. No, you sign it, then you print your name. Date it. The twenty first. <laughs> okay, give me back now. Both of us sign this. But I didn't sign right it. away. Am I? No. And then and then he disappears. I go. Where is he? He disappears. I had to get my smoothie. Then he I get you smoothie. Because, comes back because Doctor Ian Smith says I need more protein in the morning. I'm very happy about that too. And I would have, sign the goddamn paper. And I would have more energy if I just uh, had a little more protein in the morning. He knows my protein was way down because mm -hmm. I had to take, I had to write a journal about everything I eat. <laughs> and then there was an analysis made. A journal at a Starbucks a couple days ago. That's wonderful. Doctor Ian Smith is my personal. 
uh, nutritionist. Uh, rocks. And, uh, and uh, I don't know. Health guru? Health guru, right. That's pretty cool. Matter of fact, to have he, on your side. he's suggesting uh, mid-show meditation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to say no <laughs> on the mid-show meditation. And I'll be wearing robes in the very near future. <laughs> and don't get too uh, shocked when I come in completely bald. Robes? Oh, <laughs> no, not those oh, type of robes. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> So oh, yeah, yeah, but I walk in at uh, I don't know. I was a little late this morning too, which wasn't yeah. wasn't the best thing. And uh, and all of a sudden you're just yelling at me. Sign, 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 you're sign. A, this. You're in a major panic, and I'm like, how funny would it be if I just decide not to sign this and just walk away? You have to. <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing? I'd have just forged it and sent them. It doesn't matter at this point. It really doesn't. Just find another redhead. Just go, whatever it takes. <laughs> sign the goddamn paper. I hose down the seat. Get another redhead in here and just call him Opie. So Anthony said, either your signature or your brains will be on this contract. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I, I get the signatures from Opie, and now comes fax time. The big, huge fax machine here at XM. I get the number uh, that I'm supposed to fax it to uh, from one of the lawyers, and uh, I, I dial it up, and I fax it, and you hear the, the little faint <laughs> from the fax machine, and then you hear... Hello, you've returned. In it. If you, uh, please leave a message after the beep. That's when you know when your fax machine talks, something's wrong. When you hear words coming out, you're supposed to hear like beep, beep, beep. <laughs> you know, it goes into fax mode. It's talking, so I'm like, she, she gave me the wrong number. So I had to get Ben on it to get the right number. <laughs> Let me call her up. You know, Psycho Mark would have been able to get the number. In between doing Psycho Mark impressions, he's helping you out. Psycho Mark, Master Poe impressions. He's just he's fucking Rich Little back there. Is is has to get me a very important phone number. Gentlemen, I saw you on TV last night. Pretty, yeah, pretty impressive, uh, yeah. gentlemen. If Master Poe was faxing something, it might look something like this. I didn't realize this was so big that you. Would be on TV, gentlemen. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you're also in every single paper in America today. Opie, that's, I hear you're going back to BAB. That's got to be pretty big, huh? <laughs> got to be pretty big, huh? Gentlemen. <laughs> uh, are you, uh, I get the, uh, staying here in this particular area? Well, where would we go? We Wait. work for XM Satellite Radio. Yeah. Where are we going? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking I mean, about just saying because it's sometimes it's putting about, shit around this thing. So I'm saying about paperwork. There's a lot of pudding and stuff here. I'm saying, yeah. is, will you be going to another place just because it's cleaner? Why, why would it, we? Uh, what's the, what if what if what if this whole thing is our latest prank? Huh? What? This whole thing. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm just talking about putting on the ceiling from from Twitchells. <laughs> what if it's our latest prank? What if we got How come in a tizzy? We're always off on April Fools. <laughs> Why can't we just push it a little further? Well, I'll tell you how amazing you motherfuckers would be if it was. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest yeah. prank ever. Ever. There'd be six or seven other motherfuckers going, we all got you. Ha ha. It could be a prank. Let's just see how far we take it. <laughs> all right. So anyway, yeah, hurry up with the uh, the fax thing, I guess. No, it's pretty much done. I got the fax number finally. It just took so long. Everything takes so goddamn long that uh, everything. And now, and then... I'm walking back to the studio, and I look where you usually sit, mm -hmm. and you leave this very important 38-page <laughs> document slaying on the couch in the office, Did you face it? up. Yes, I took it, and it's in the do folder you read, now. Do you read, all of, do you read those contracts? Do you I read, read everything. Anthony is... I read this every is, hold word. Hold on, Patrice. This is what I can tell you about Anthony. From the beginning, I always relied on him to read through all this stuff. Because this is not my that that is not my strength whatsoever. Now Bob is mumbo the, you know, jumbo. Bob, Super Agent Bob Eatman is the guy. He you well, know well he draws them up. He draw but he he helps draw them up. But every time there are other people involved that draw them up and then they go back. And forth. Yeah, there's a little inside stuff. Every time there's a really important document or contract that we have to uh, you know sign, I I just I'll call Ant and go. So what's in there? Anything that I have to worry about? He goes nah. 
And I just sign. I trust them that much. Thereof, thereforth, thereof, the, thereof, oh. through the thereof, though forth. Lawyers have and twisted forth. simple shit into just a, into careers. I guess they had to figure out, you know, I'm a lawyer. What do we do to make money? We got to make shit so complicated right, that the normal Joe can't understand it, and then they'll have to hire us. So we'll throw in, like, fucking Latin. We'll make shit in Latin, and we won't change it to English. I still f be fucked up sometimes when I'm signing shit and it says, it's <coughs> by two lines. When I'll go, what, what am I supposed to? It, am I it? <laughs> bye. So bye is what? Bye is the motherfucker. I'm the dude. Who is it? Wait, I'm, I'm it. me too. Yeah. Because sometimes you have a corporation, you're like, all of it. So I'm like, yeah. oh, wait, I'm the loner. Okay, I'm loaning me out. Yeah. To the lendy. You. And the lend but I'm the what? motherfucker. What? Yeah. yeah. All right, Patrice. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so can you just put my name in there so I, I know? Can you just file my my documents? No, you will be taking that home with you. I will take mine home with me. All right. And the I other want one, some documents. We'll make copies of. Let me see. Let me see what you guys are making. Slide that get shit home. over. <laughs> Motherfuckers, I get up at nine thirty in the fucking yesterday morning to get here on time. Let me see some of these fucking paperwork. I Only ain't. paper I got is your fucking intern telling me it's Friday date. <laughs> Today's fucking tapes is gonna be on you, fucking millionaires. <laughs> Two millionaires. You can't get a better picture than this shit in the back of the fucking. Oh, is that awful? <laughs> what the fuck was you electrocuted this morning? That I know. The uh, fuck is wish I hat, really nigga? needed a haircut that day, <laughs> dude. This motherfucker look like mattress stuffing. <laughs> we finally get. I didn't, we finally okay. get a little press, and they they, they literally hate us. Found the worst they possible in, pictures. <laughs> awful. They always put in really bad shots. And fucking Opie and David Lee Roth look the same. <laughs> It's like, can we mess your hair up exactly so you look like David Lee Roth? <laughs> and Anthony never looks like he. It, you look like you really are. That this one, this picture behind you yeah. is your stilo. That's your you guys think because this smiling shit that don't it work. It just ain't. You, I know. <laughs> the uh -oh. smiles of happy old men. Hi, motherfuckers. <laughs> now you know where this picture was taken. You're looking at the New York Post. Oh, gel. Radio everything. days. Yeah. Opie and Anthony's return leaves Roth speechless, but has Howard buzzing. This was a top secret meeting we did with John Minnelli before we signed one? with uh, XM Satellite Radio down in the village. Is that where that picture is yeah, from? Yeah, absolutely. So a couple of years ago. Wow. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago, and um, we were <laughs> actually during during this meeting because he wanted an update on what we were doing. During this meeting, um, our phone rang. From Super Agent Bob Eatman to yeah. tell us that we were going to XM. <laughs> yep. And then we had to go back to the table and go, well, so, uh, ah, uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, we're not sure. Anthony, your hair looks like like <laughs> five different ethnic groups. <laughs> you have an a afro, a mullet. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese bowl cut. What the fuck? It's... <laughs> It's just a wreck. You and your, you both of you motherfuckers, you and your folded, lean into the camera. You oh. motherfuckers are so uncomfortable. It's not even funny. <laughs> I want to see some pictures of you, motherfucker. I know I, there's some I, of you. I, I, you might, if you, you know what will be worth money one day if I ever get famous is a picture of me smiling in the picture. Yeah. I, I just can't yeah, do know. it. It's just, it looks, it looks like how painful you two motherfuckers look. You always put on a happy face. <laughs> you got it for the paper. I've never seen you without a hat before. That's what it's very, oh, yeah. it's like. Oh. And I was just getting out of my anorexic stage. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even kidding, man. Oh shit! That is the worst picture ever. Jesus yeah. Christ! Well, uh, the picture in the uh, Daily News is much better. I I'm think sure. the picture in the Daily News is the best. Yeah, that's the best yeah, one that's this a morning. Great one. Here, go to the Daily News there, and go to page 127. Oh in the back. yeah, that's a good one. Because this is such a big story, it, it deserves to be on page 127. <laughs> No respect ever. That's a good picture. That's a perfect picture. What's wrong with that picture? Yeah. <laughs> What's, What's wrong, wrong with, with that picture? <laughs> There's Excuse no me. hand in Hello. this picture. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you, you, it's why, why have a picture of the pervy pal? Yeah. Is, there, is there a reason to have a pervy pal There's in There's something there? going on with the New York Daily News and Anthony, because um, in recent uh, months... They have just decided to have a picture of me and not Anthony. You know, there was you, an it's issue the only where it was in just the ranks, me. Baby, they trying, they trying. There was a picture though, uh, an article though, that, where it was just my picture. Divide and conquer. They won't put both of us in. Yeah, that's the other thing because they don't have room. 
It would be better if if you was gonna do that. If he was gonna be the news and go, listen, let's 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 just do, let's get them to be like, just see if they test their egos. Yeah. Yeah, you let's know. just put one in. See Test if they the start going at each other. Really? It, no. it would be more. Never. I know. I stop always blowing off the fucking um dissension no. thing. We know you love each other, motherfuckers. No, Patrice. So not. we just testing the. Actually, <laughs> actually, we just we just make fun of each other when this happens. We count them. We count up how many pictures <laughs> the, the of me. New York Daily how many News. of him? Oh, we count the quotes. Quotes. He got mad. See, it's Obi's picture, but I got credit for one of the quotes. <laughs> <laughs> he got credit for one of my quotes. Yeah. In the From same article, show. it's just one picture. Uh, uh, From geez. yesterday's show, um, the Daily News is reporting Anthony Kuma, uh, Kumia yesterday took a swipe. Jeez, can you get my fucking name right? Took a swipe at their rival Stern saying, I wonder how he'll try to spin this. And Greg Huggis is the one that said that. That's right. <laughs> Greg Huggis said that, not Anthony Kumia. <laughs> Kumia. <laughs> Anthony Kumia. What is it? Kumia? Kumia? Kumia. <laughs> hey, come. Kumia. Oh, I had to deal with that one growing up. Hey, Kumia. So Come anyway, here. yeah, the pictures are not too flattering yeah, today. Report, Opie and Anthony in for off. <laughs> and then it's just Opie. We <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Opie and Anthony well, in for off. <laughs> I, I plan on doing the show. <laughs> just And Opie. it's going to be wonderful. You ah, see my picture here. These motherfuckers. Hey, uh, this guy doesn't think we'll put him on the air for some reason. Let's, uh, let's say hi to Seth in Miami. Seth, what's up? Hello. Hey, Seth. Hello, sir. Hello. Hey, I'm glad that, uh, well, I'm surprised that you guys put me through because I told them that I was a Stern fan. There's and nothing wrong with that. Show. Here's the difference yeah, between I mean, the two shows. Uh, we throw you guys on. Uh, yeah, but, you know, usually your screeners don't even let you get that far. No, you know? it's, uh, that's actually, it's not true, percent. and if you listen to our show, you would know that uh, the Stern fans get on, uh, you know, quite often. Whenever they call, the screeners just put on, if you're, if you're a Stern fan with, like, a shitty call, they're not going to put you through. If right. you maybe got something to say, which I hope you do. Uh, well, I hate to tell you, with or, without your, with or without your sleep, with or without your protein, your fucking show sucks, man. And I see you have your black hole there today. Huh? Keep going. Oh, uh, hey, Seth, great. that was a terrific phone call. Wait a minute, right. please don't hang up on him. Seth, continue. Now, I want to know, I just want to know this. How, how do you listen to the show? Well, unfortunately, it felt like I was sitting in a dentist uh, waiting room right now, but I normally, I don't have XM. I have Sirius, so, which is the so, way to go. So, but... sir, how do you listen to the Opie and Anthony show? We're on XM. Yeah, I understand that. No, I once so, in a while I do listen. No, hold it, hold it. How do, how do you? How, I'm asking you, how do you listen? What XM unit do you listen to? Well, where I work, they they play it on the uh, in um, on the system inside the office where I am. They put which, what, um, what? What type of work do you do? Like, what's uh, the line of work? Well, I prefer not to say. Hey, you could, why? Dude, it's you not know like, what we do. It's not like you're telling where you work. Is it? Is it the computer industry? Is it food? Is it service? Like poor what? Seth thought he was going to get under our He's skin. He's about as dumb as I've, I've never heard of. I'm trying. As hold on, Patrice. Hold on. Where, what type of business is it? It's um, it's a retail business. A retail business that is playing a show that curses every two seconds. And well, talks about I mean, cunt um, no, and pussy and d Seth. I I'm really not thinking you're being honest here. You no, don't. You're not honest, familiar with the show. You've yes, listened to Howard Stern bash us. You listen to the fans bash us. But you really don't know. Name one thing you've heard on our program. Well, yesterday you were talking about fucking 9/11 for two hours and Patrice and his stupid black shit. Okay. All over the place doesn't know what the fuck well, was going my on. My stupid with black shit. God damn it. I'll I'll agree with you, Seth. It was, it was stupid, stupid black, black shit. <laughs> I wholeheartedly agree. Now I'm, you're a fan. Now of I like <laughs> Seth. Now I agree with Seth because I hate that 9/11 conspiracy shit. Oh, uh, Seth loves it too. Come on, stop playing, Seth. Don't be. You can be racist, but don't be mean, Seth. We understand what. <laughs> Seth, we understand what you're trying to do, and it's just not working. You should be honest and. and Realize right. you failed miserably, right. and you know it's a big day for our program, and there's nothing you can yeah. say that's going to knock us down. We're you, feeling you good, there, right? We're feeling I, I, good. I, I, even I even working. Anthony and I realize when Howard has a big announcement or something huge happens in his career, we go, "Wow, that's, that's pretty big." And there's not much we yeah. can do. We know that. Do you like? Do you we like, know that? Finally, do you I like Jim Norton? On his, I put my finger on it yesterday because the differences between the shows, and you can hear it out or you can't. All but right. the difference between the shows is basically this: you have you guys have it scripted out. And Patrice doesn't. Oh have it my God! You guys, scripted. You guys have it scripted out. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Seth. How how do you think we have it scripted? We don't, even know, we don't even know what we're going to talk about next. That's the beauty of what we Scripted. do. Scripted. Well, Sometimes we fall obvious. flat on our faces because we don't know what we're well, doing Well, that's next. obvious. Yeah. Oh, now he's saying it's obvious we don't have it scripted. Seth, you're a fucking boob, 
and oh, you, you, you you've made no <laughs> point. <laughs> you're, fucking, a you're a boob. You're an ass. Go back. Go <laughs> back to no. Listen to serious. Listen to serious. Go ahead. Go listen to serious. Go away. Listen to Howard. Listen to Howard. Listen to Howard. Look at Seth. He, he was trying to get under our skin, but it looks like hey, he got under Seth. Let Howard skin. know any of his listeners he wants to get in touch with will pass the fucking message on, okay? Oh, bullshit. Yes, bullshit, Seth. Really any of Howard's stuff. listeners, the 90% that didn't follow, will be happy to pass along the fucking message oh, when yeah, we're talking to him, asshole. Hey, bye bye, bye, Seth. Uh, bye yeah, bye. Seth, how does it feel to know that the Howard Stern era? Is officially over. Is done, my friend. How does it? How does, how does, how does that does feel? feel? How does the yeah, revolution does feel? How does it feel, sir? You know how what the revolution feel? is? The revolution is the water swirling down the toilet. That's the fucking Howard Revolution, my friend. Yeah, bullshit. Any messages he needs? Any messages he needs to pass on to his fans? Let us know. We'll tell him. Yes, yeah, Seth. If the rumors are true, you realize what's going to happen, right? We get to talk to his listeners every morning. But he can't talk to our listeners. There it's you go. Drive him nuts. All the calls will be like. Bye bye, Seth. Bye bye. Bye bye. Wait a minute, Seth. Seth. Yeah, Seth. Patrice. Yeah. Why do you hate me? Hate them? Fuck them. Oh, Patrice is just that black shit. Yeah. yeah come yeah, on, don't Patrice, hate me. No, Patrice ain't the fucking black. It's all shit. Patrice, scripted Patrice, out. Patrice doesn't want to hang up because he knows the fucking story. Wait, yeah. that we don't know what to say to you. It's not in the script. Yeah. Wait. Uh, someone's writing it down for me. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> scripted out. Hold on. Someone's writing something down for me because I can't think on my own. Oh, do you like Bill Burr and Jimmy Norton? You like Jimmy? Well, that fucking sinus motherfucker doesn't even know how to fucking speak. You wow. Looks again, like I'm liking Seth. Looks now like I like him again. Faithful listener of the program. It's not, he. I don't think, and, and just for yeah. real, I don't think that he really is a Stern fan. I, got, I think I think he's just I, he, I, I think got, he's playing. I think he's, he's just miserable. Around. He's just playing around. I got my. I, I got. He's, he's just playing around because you can hear. But you can hear him. You can hear him. All right, listen. We're done with Seth. This is so no, sad. Done with me. Seth, oh, it's written down. And Anthony, wait a minute. Yes. Ask him yes. what job. Gives them this much time to go and curse out a radio show for an hour. <laughs> yeah, where are you, you standing? You fucking unemployed idiot. Are you in the supply you closet? You fucking hey, stupid hey, asshole. My latest script has come in, Anthony. <laughs> yes, Opie. Wait, wait. Wait, Seth. Opie's script is in. My script Opie's is script in because everything is scripted. Seth from Miami. Go hey. screw. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God that was written down. We, might have, get, we really might have to get better writers, by the way. Uh, Holy shit. Who wrote that? I do. <laughs> mm. It's my. It's our new thing. Go screw. Go screw. Yeah. Go screw. Go screw. Fan, did you write that? No. Mm -mm. Go screw. I wrote high OP. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I figured I had to jazz up the high OP Jesus, a little bit. Jesus, look at that 60s detective face right here. What the fuck's Dan, going on here? And he's taking mustache day pretty seriously. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> we wanted to do must mustache day, but it, I had a I had a shave because we may be doing a lot of things. Jesus, wrestler manager face. Look at this. Yeah, yeah. Part. He's growing the sides up too. Those are growing in. Well, I figured that was probably the most ridiculous thing you could do. That could be. <laughs> wow, that's good, Danny. I thought it was good mustache start. day. Good start. Wait. Wait, you know what, Danny looks like a picture. <laughs> he looks like a picture of a of a Ming Dynasty uh, leader. <laughs> like he, he Genghis like, Khan. He's like Sun Tzu. He got Sun Tzu. God, that makes you look more Asian. You're right. He looks like fuck. Have you read his book, The Art of Stupidity? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh my God. Hold still for pal talk, man. Hold no, get uh, it. There you go. Yeah, that's a great good shot. God, man. Danny. And now turn growing, this way slightly. He's growing in the curls on there the end. There you go. Which a little now light, turn the other but... way. There you go. Oh, For pal good. talk. The guys have decided to do mustache day today. Uh, we'll take a digital picture and throw it up on opianthony.com. God damn, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you hand in? More Me? More Imus? Oh my god, we gotta get to all the Imus audio, we gotta get to the Howie audio. Imus very uh, we gotta get supportive. To the, we gotta get to the news reports, uh, the articles, <laughs> the fans. Uh, let's say hi to John in Long Beach. John, what's going on? Hey Jen. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey. Hey, Opie, you look like a cougar's wet dream in the post. Wow. <laughs> a up. cougar's wet dream. It's like Quentin Tarantino from uh, Pulp Fiction. Dorks. It looks like a couple of dorks. A couple of dorks. Yeah, the pictures aren't flattering. Oh, well. All right, punch it out, boys. All right, thank you. Let's, uh, what do you want to do here? My God, should we take a break? Should we get into the Imus? Imus is all over this today. Imus.
Oh, it's funny. Scripted. <laughs> <laughs> this this show could be the furthest thing ever anything from from being scripted. Oh my god. It's funny how negative. Some days we just... dream to be script it would be a pleasure to be scripted. Yeah, let's go to Don in New Jersey. Don, what's going on? Guys, I just want to say it was nice to see you on the news last night without having to hear your mom's box on the radio. Yeah, it's kind of weird to actually have uh, positive reports. Yeah. We actually got a lot of positive reports when we joined XM, so it's uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun the next yep. few weeks. All it's right. good to see. Good luck, guys. All right, Don, thanks. Let's uh, let's uh, play Imus from yesterday. Little I man, yeah, always been supportive. Imus, it's a good place to start. Coming up in twelve minutes <laughs> after the hour, the Imus morning program article in the paper. This one of the papers that my boy is Opie and Anthony, who I like a lot, by the way, may be coming back to CBS Radio. Charles, did you know that news? Son of a gun! The bombshell, huh? That is. So may come wow. may, may go back to K Rock. What they, whatever they call K Rock now. What do they call K Rock? Damned if I know. Free FM. Free FM, yeah. All right. Because right now that's about what it's worth. <laughs> he just go they'll just sign it over to you. Well, yeah, you mean David Lee Roth is not working out? Why are you kidding? I mean no. That's surprising. <clears throat> well, I, I support the OP and Anthony move one and two. Huge. Uh CBS fired him about three or four years ago because of some stunt they did where people were having sex at St. Patrick's, which I would point out probably wasn't the first time, just the first time it was broadcast. But it, um, <laughs> but they, everybody deserves a second chance, and they certainly do. You bet. And uh, I may, in fact, be Opie's father. I'm just not. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't want to make Opie's mom upset, but I don't know where Opie's mom was back. Well, how old is Opie? Forty-one. So, yeah, in that area. Where was yeah. I? In, where was I then? Could be, I man. Well, she worked. Uh, well, she was working <laughs> at one of those, <laughs> at one of those joints I used to go to when I worked for the railroad. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, well, we don't know anything about this, do we, Charles? No, nothing at all. You know, so O and A. Surprise. Well, that that would that would be Stern's old slot, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'll be done. Yeah. I'll be done. Well, they must like Stern, don't you think? <laughs> oh, no, maybe they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. By the way, I'm gonna, Rob and I are going to sue Opie's brother. We're going to get our T-shirts. Oh, we're going to go visit him. This is ridiculous. I want my Opie and Anthony T-shirt. What is this? How, I, I, I don't how hard is it to... Uh, I don't understand it. I have 500 Mickey Mouse T-shirts, and I can't get my own A T-shirt. <laughs> I don't know what happened with his uh, T-shirts, by the way. <laughs> my brother's making. I he uh, got one. My brother's making brand new T-shirts. You can go to myradiostore.com for the Opie and Anthony T-shirts. But I thought we sent them, and he's saying we never sent the T-shirts over there. Yeah. And then he got an XM unit recently, and he's bitching that it, it wasn't turned on right for him. So yeah. there's a panic behind the scenes trying to get Imus' uh, XM radio turned on. Mm -hmm. So that was from yesterday, and then uh, this morning, first thing, Imus had this to say: We couldn't run in there. What? Gee, what? Well, can you, when, at this time, reveal uh, this this huge top secret, classified top secret that you and Chuck were? Oh man, I don't know. If you had this inside information that you weren't going to tell us. Can we? You said you would be able to do it this week. I said I didn't say. Well, it's out now. You know, are you still? Are we still? Well, no. Opie and Anthony coming back to CBS Radio. There you go, baby. Back with us. Huge. My boys. There it is. It's out, out now. now. Yeah. Well, so that, that was the privileged inside information you had? That can't, yes. That can't be it. <laughs> Why? Well, I mean, that was as well known as, as Tom and Katie were going to have a baby. That's been known for months. What are you talking about? It's in the papers. It's in the papers today. What the, I mean, you didn't know this uh, two or three days ago. I knew it last week. What? How could you know it last week? This was in strictest confidence. It was all over the internet. Everybody knew. <laughs> this is. They did. It's been speculated about for a while. Oh, sure. God. What really was the news? Oh, well, that's come on. That is. That's it. Oh, that was. That was the news we had. You kidding me? You're doing it again. What really is the stuff that you can't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you no. jerk! You didn't know this. There's no possible way. You couldn't have possibly. We, we were. We no, were. Everybody. Seriously. Everybody? Me message boards oh, yeah. on the internet. I have Francesca type info. 
<laughs> no, it, this rose way above any Francesca. No, Francesca had no oh, clue. Are you kidding me? We were the only ones who knew this. Well, you couldn't have been the only ones who knew it. Well, there were like three or f uh, There was a tiny coterie of people who knew this. This was the worst kept secret, by the way, on the planet. <laughs> the, you, I mean, it was all over the. It's all over the newspapers this morning. Hmm. Well, I thought we had... Uh, this, this, the, the, again, it was last week. This was well, way before you got the information. I, I, encouraged the company to, I encouraged the company to do this a couple of years ago. I remember. <clears throat> but, and then, then a steady drumbeat. And, but it's, it's smart. I mean, it's, it's, work, it's working out great. You bet. Because you, be, you don't want to be the person to follow Stern. That's just... He's not going to win then, so... Oh, but these guys are great. Oh, man. I love these guys. Yeah, absolutely. I don't like it when they make fun of me, but... I do. <laughs> Maybe I do a little bit. <laughs> I think you do. Yeah. Ten minutes after the hour. I may, I may be Opie's dad, too, by the way. <laughs> I know. I have to check that out. I'm going to do a DNA thing on this kid. <laughs> anyway... Big secret. <laughs> oh, yeah, for like two days. Well, we can't say anything oh, yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we, you know, well, once again... Well, I thought it was. I, I mean, we uh, were assured that it was, it was... Everybody was talking about it at the radio station. Well, oh, yeah, but man. see, we... But we knew, sort of. <laughs> well, we've just been made fools up again, that's all. Well, this is outrageous. Somebody's going to pay. There you go. That's Imus from this morning. A little slow in the delivery. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm like... He's uh, he's just kind of. He's very happy for yeah, us. Very happy. And uh, I met him at a book signing a few years back, and we've been friends ever since. He's he's uh, he's stand, he's a stand up guy. He's a really nice guy. Love the guy, man. And uh, you know, he tried to help us along when we w didn't really have much, and uh, mm -hmm. and he's very happy for us. And then I guess just a little while ago, it's a, it's a quick thirty seconds. This just came in. I miss is all over this. Uh, uh, this wink, wink news this morning. Please welcome to the program now, Newsweek Magazine, Howard Feynman. Good morning, Howard. Good morning, Mr. Imus. So you're not going on satellite radio with Bob Dylan? Uh, no, I'm not. I, 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 I can't wait to hear Dylan. Of course, I don't get satellite radio, but it, that ought to be pretty interesting. But, but didn't everybody know that Opie and Anthony were going back to broadcast oh, radio? You, you knew this, too? Even I knew that. Really? Yeah, we all knew. That. Everybody knew that. Yeah, but they're coming back to a CBS, so we yeah. fired him. You know, oh, not we. I didn't fire him. Oh, I, I would have never fired him. There you go. So, yeah. the dude from Newsweek. Yeah, and uh, the Bob Dylan thing is starting up on XM. That's pretty huge. Yeah, Bob Dylan's doing some radio for XM Satellite Radio. All right. Very good. We should uh, take a little break. Mm -hmm. We'll get to the phones next. We'll get to Howard and how he's trying to spin. Oh, what's the going on? Spin. It's just hilarious. How do you spin this it's in a bad just way? Hilarious. How do you spin this in a bad way? I, I I read the message boards and stuff, and I pop on, and and somebody actually posted, this shows what a failure Opie and Anthony are, <laughs> and the guy was lambasted, like lambasted by so many people in a row. I got a laugh out of it. It's like how could you? I, I can understand you don't like us and something, whatever, but. How do you slam this? How do Unbelievable. You? So we'll get into the Stern audio next. Also, um, you, uh, you, you made a very, very uh, big phone call last night. I did? Can you talk about that? Uh, let me think. I made so many, to tell you the truth. I let made none. You made none. <laughs> none. I was obsessed with going to sleep last night. I'm really trying to think of what phone call you're talking about. You the know. big... I called God. <laughs> yeah, well, yes, very close, very close. Yes, very close to that. Yeah, I did. I made a, uh, a little phone call. I reached out. Can we talk about that? Yeah. All right, we'll talk about that next as well. What you do is you put them back on put direct TV. Put them back on. So uh, for all the pests out there that... That aren't sure that they're making a difference. You're making a huge difference. Yeah. And you should step it up a little bit. 1-800-DIRECT-TV, okay? Right. A lot of questions, Anthony. A lot of questions. Oh, my God. Uh, everyone is asking things. How will things work? They don't know. 
Uh, I'll put it this way. 99.9% of you are wrong. You don't know how this is going to play out. Uh, they, they've, they're, they're already freaking, freaking out, Opie. But they have no clue how it's going to work. Logistics. There's still things happening behind the scenes. So uh, I guess what we want to say this morning is this. Um, we, we, we're just going to have fun with everything today. Today is a day to just have fun. Right. Make fun of the stupid pictures of your pals in the newspaper. Yes. Make fun of the TV coverage. Make fun of whatever you want. And on Monday, we'll answer all questions. Right. I, I promise. Anthony promises, okay? Everything will be uh, made clear. And uh, and just trust us. Don't, don't, you, some, worry. don't you worry. Don't you worry. There are some people out there that are just so angry. Don't worry. So angry. Like we're giving up on satellite and uh, no, we, no. And the show no. is going to change completely. No. Sellouts. And the, I can tell you, sellouts. That was suckers. another. That was something I read a couple you two of. Suckers. Let me how, tell how you something. Go back we to didn't, sell out. we sell didn't out. sell out. We bought in. Sellouts. Says, oh, you motherfucking ex blue collar man. Somebody should cut your throat for saying some shit like that. We didn't sell out. We bought in. Sellouts. That's LZ Punk. That as we, movie. As we, Somebody uh, should call Yafet Koto and fuck you up. <laughs> sellouts as we just uh, think about doing six hours a day. Yeah, that's I know. Sellout. Hours of radio? Well, Stop. that's one of the things we're thinking about. We got, we got things still to, to work out. That's just low self-esteem to work Plus, that long. <laughs> oh, it is. It really is. You Plus have no fact, belief in yourself. You work putting for six in overtime. Hours. Plus the fact, I can tell you this much, this channel will uh, improve greatly, and other things happening because of uh, the things you're hearing. Well, there's, fellas, there's so much to this, I can't even, we uh, we have to wait till Monday. But there was something else that Anthony and I were working on behind the scenes, and it was like, yeah, that's an interesting idea. But now that all this is happening, and, and the media is going crazy, it has raised our profile, and I got a phone call yesterday, and, and uh, somebody wants to green light something else that would be really, really cool and huge. That's all I can say right now. It's yeah. all just kind of coming together today. So today's the day to just kind of sit back, laugh. That's funny how and nobody have, even have in a the good studio time. really knows. Like people think this yeah. shit is. I don't even know. No, like, I'm going. What the fuck are you though. talking about? Cover the mic and no tell me knows. something, nigga. We got. I know. I tell you, you won't see me on free radio. I don't even know how to talk anymore without swearing. Uh, it's a wrap. Yeah, I come visit you, motherfuckers. Uh, you know. Yeah, but you I'll come do say hi other people's the radio. Patrice, that's it's I not do cornball shit in the morning where I'm going. Hey, I'm gonna be at Scooby Dooby. Right. But it's like I'm not. I don't do that it there. It's like you see, you know? it's not like going on somebody else's show. You'll look at our faces and just think, motherfucker. <laughs> right. Like nigga. Uh, you know. But you go on. It's like you can say that. Hey, we you can say that. A dirty word. Blues, blues, blues. You just might have to say word. mother effer. Yeah. I guess I could do it though. That's it. Sell out. It's watered down. Depending on what time it is. <laughs> Depending on, yeah, what time it is exactly. What the fuck are we getting ourselves That's into? That's why you want me to come out kidding? to Albany. Look, let's be honest. What the fuck are we getting ourselves into? We the had an shit. easy We had an easy life. We're in the shit. I had an easy life. We're incapable of just sitting back. We're incapable Six of it. Six hours of radio. We can't just sit hey, back. That's just oh. ignorant. Stupid Fareed called me yesterday. Oh, really? Is he going to uh, pay me uh, Stupid what I paid for those shares of Citadel stock? Stupid Fareed, who owns uh, Citadel, basically, Yeah. who was a huge supporter when we were at CBS. Huge supporter. Yep. Huge, huge, huge. Pretty much left uh, CBS because of some of the crap Stern pulled and uh, you know calling his kids terrorists and stuff, a whole thing that went on there. And uh, we're, I'm coming back from the secret meeting in the middle of nowhere. At a place that everyone thought was safe, but then we get recognized in the parking lot, so it wasn't that safe after all. No. We'll get into that story. we got a lot of stories. On yeah, Monday. On uh, Monday. So I'm, I'm driving uh, back to Manhattan, and, uh, and uh, the phone rings, and it's Fareed. Mm -hmm. And he can't call me personally. He's one of these corporate asses. <laughs> and we have a relationship with him, but I hate this crap. There are corporate asses out there that don't make their own phone calls because they're they're too important. Yeah. So you get some secretary bimbo on the phone like, Opie, this is blah blah. Can You're you like, take a phone call for this Reed? And, and I go yes. And next thing you know, he's on the phone. It's like why couldn't he just call me personally? You know what you got to do? You got to grab your girl real quick. 
put her on the phone. So when Fareed gets on the phone, you go, uh, Fareed, could you hold? Mr. Hughes is busy for the moment. <laughs> I'll see if he can speak with you. That corporate crap. Yeah. Just make your own phone call if you think we have some kind of relationship where you need to, 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 to wish us good luck. But he doesn't wish us good luck, Anthony. He's a little bitter because Fareed at Citadel had an opportunity to do exactly what they're talking about in the paper today. Yeah. And he, and he failed miserably. Do you remember the, the experiment in Syracuse that lasted like four days? That disaster? Was that an experiment? I don't know what the hell it was, yeah. but it, it failed miserably. Yeah. And uh, he had pretty much 18 months to try to figure something out, right? Right. So now he's, he's hearing things, so he calls me up, and he goes, I have just one thing to say to you. Don't blow this one. Okay. I go, Fareed, what are you talking about? He goes, I know you guys don't blow this one. And I'm like, I'm a different person, Fareed. We've learned. We've had uh, you know, enough time off to realize, look, we love what we do. He goes, no, no, no. It's in your DNA to fuck up. I'm like, this is supposed to be a nice day for me. What the hell? You're, you're wishing me luck by saying this? I might have to agree with Fareed. <laughs> no. Say, no. But then I, went in, then I told him what I'm all about now. I go, Fareed? Now I'm just a silly guy. I'm the silly one. Right. Instead of being angry all the time, now I'm just the silly one. Why are you so upset Why? at what he just said? That's like I'm sitting there going, it's not, that was a that was a fair. Maybe it was like like people say to me, yeah, like people say to me is 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 like they're like, well, I might agree with what you're saying, but I don't like the way you're saying it, right? Yeah. And it might be that it's like. He, maybe he didn't say it right. But what was he saying that was completely Patrice. wrong? Ready? Here's what he said. And I'm going to say it like he should have said it. Hey, old man, congratulations, man. Hey, tell Anthony, congratulations, too. Hey, you know, you guys, you can do some things sometimes. And, you know, yeah, you don't man. think. And, you, you know, hey, let's be honest. Oh, <laughs> Throw yeah. a couple of let's be honest in there. Which so makes you, you have to agree. Hey, let's be honest. You almost got fired. You know, somebody got there. something mm. happened the other day, you know. Mm. <laughs> so, hey, look, good luck. And, um, hey. You know, just 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 take it slow. Yeah. Well, but he said, "Yeah, you stupid motherfuckers, you stupid." But I'll, that's I'll, really I'll, both the same thing. I'll tell you why I'm pissed. It's a little frustrating because uh, a lot of people think, you know, um, this is the Opie and Anthony of 2002. Well, we've changed for the better. Really, in the four I years, think, it's been I think dramatic. We have a, I think we have uh, a, a much better show, a funnier show. It's still edgy. It's still, you know, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. But uh, we don't feel like getting fired anymore. You know, there was we. Uh, and, and and I told Fareed, I'm like, Fareed, we've been on XM for a year and a half. We haven't blown it. What? We haven't blown it's not it? Wood. Well, you Where's didn't wood? blow it under here before. Like yeah, that's what. Okay, the times you got fired. What, 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 did you try to get fired? Um, was fired in your mind when this when it was unfolding? One out of two. <laughs> yeah, I mean you could have got One fired for Turkey Day, really, One and you two, wasn't yeah. playing. Was you planning on getting fired for Turkey Day that day? Nah. If somebody no. had to chop somebody else in the head with one of those axes they brought. It wasn't our fault. It would it would be like you could have got fired for that. Yeah, maybe. But you wasn't trying to. No. One out of two. Also, getting fired from that. Rat trap to the balls. From that job wasn't that bad. That guy's ball could have flew through a scroll. I'm like, a, um. Oh, believe me, legal, legal had pawed over that whole thing. <laughs> made, made sure that was fine. Pat from Buffalo. <laughs> Pat, go ahead. Pat. Hey, oh, uh, how silly does the lady you whip poker chips at think you are? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you blowing up my spot? <laughs> Yeah, You're that really was silly. silly. When, you Look, I, when I first came to XM, I was still very, very angry, but I'm slowly but surely moving into silly mode. All right, there's been some incidents. Incidents. <laughs> yeah, you guys are. You guys. You guys are right, smiley now. You guys did smile now. Used to. You, that used to be your your stilo was a, like surly little look on their pictures like that. <laughs> with a with a picture of Jim's head floating somewhere in there. <laughs> now, it's, now it's just happy old men. <laughs> well, uh, happy middle aged men buying houses. <laughs> I I could well I could you know I settling down. We've had a lot of uh, a lot of meetings and and uh, discussions in the last couple of weeks and uh, a lot of a lot of cool things. Things have been said, and there's a there's a new regime, and uh, there's some people that have said that uh, we weren't treated right when we were over there. Well, yeah. there's some people that admitted. still there, that was that's the, any remnants left, like maybe lowercase guys couple. back then that that up that upgraded or you know that got promotions. Mm -hmm. or Honestly, 
Not really. No one that's going to get in the way. No, I mean, all, somebody all the big players that could have been a, a fan back then, too. Like, somebody that could have been a fucking intern, but now they're, like, director of... Oh, you know, my God. Whatever. There's a guy that was interning yeah, a couple at, of them. at NEW who's now, like, a, way up in the company. And he called me. He's like, oh, OP, I would just want to uh, take this time to... Uh, Congratulate you, or because uh, I'm hearing things. I'm uh, hearing things. Right, right. And I'm like, things. I'm like, dude, you used to get like Rana Fez's coffee. <laughs> See, why, guys, why are you why are you talking like a corporate guy now? Uh, I want the room to, you know, think about that for a moment. <laughs> the people behind the glass. I don't give all that your thought. interns. This guy is in here. Yeah. Who is who? You feel more most likely will will one day be that guy that you're talking about. Interns and workers and everybody that that supports the show, the support staff. I would have to say, I think as far as corporate ladder mm -hmm. goes, Derek. I see Derek. Derek. Uh, working his way up the corporate ladder. Corporate ladder he doesn't guy. have corporate face. Stewart. He got titty cheeks. <laughs> corporate people don't have titty cheeks. Derek has pluff, fluffy cheeks, and he always looks like he's getting ready to go skateboarding. <laughs> but but you you give him a few years of experience in a suit, and uh, he'll fit right in. I like he'll to see him in a suit. Make him wear a suit fat. next time I'm here, just so I can know what he's going to look like. Right. right now, he just looks like he fucking uh, jerks off all day long. That's what Derek looks like. Well, but you would say corporate-wise, he, he might he's fucking yeah, the guy. Yeah, he's the one, because he doesn't really aspire to be on the air. Everyone right. else is an air whore. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else just looking for mic time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, let's go to the phones and say hi to Ryan in New Hampshire. Ryan, what's up? Hey, good morning, boys. How you doing? Good morning, Ryan. Good. Hey, we, uh, I heard last night, of course, WBZ was reporting that uh, you guys were going to be coming back. And uh, they also had a related story that Sirius just signed David Lee Roth for uh, $100 million a year. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there, there were rumblings, I guess, that they might pick him up over there. No, they're, they're, not right for him. they're not going to. Good for him. All right. He's working on, uh, he's working on a country album on a tour. He's actually working on a country album. Really? He's taking all the old Van Halen songs and he's turning them into country songs. That's his latest project. <laughs> really? I swear to God. Oh, I swear to God. Hey, you, who said that? <laughs> How do you feel? Why would you do that? I swear to God, that's might his latest project. Might as well jump. Ju will you might as well jump? <laughs> now go ahead and jump. I'm just a male prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Just a gigolo. We we got a little TV here in New York last night. Fox News. And welcome to the Opie and Anthony show for today. Well, goodbye, David Lee Roth. Hello, Opie and Anthony. The duo canned by CBS nearly four years ago are apparently returning to radio. The radio hosts were fired after two listeners. Returning to. Returning. We've Return. been. Return. But we've been here. But we've been Hello. doing radio for a year and a half. We Hello! Returning. Hello, we're here! Returning to radio? We're here! <laughs> Hello! You, will they ever get anything right on the local news? Well, Returning to radio? Well, if I if I ever get a gig on, like, ABC, but they'll go Patrice O'Neill returns to television yeah. from the time I was on Fox, I'll be like, well, I did web junk. Yeah, Nigga, was, you're returning. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello? This thing on? Hello? We got a huge audience Hello. on satellite radio. For some reason, they don't like to release numbers, unfortunately, because because that would be a great thing for us. But we I have know. a huge audience, and they're they're reporting this like we uh, we we haven't done radio in four years. <sighs> and welcome to the Opie and Anthony show for today. Well, goodbye, David Lee Roth. Hello, Opie and Anthony. The duo canned by CBS nearly four years ago are apparently returning to radio. The radio hosts were fired after two listeners on one of their shows got caught having sex inside of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Now the Post is reporting that they're set to replace FM's, FM's David Lee Roth, uh, who Howard Stern, who actually came after Howard Stern because <laughs> oh, he had boy. low ratings. David Lee Roth didn't last too, too no, long. No, he really didn't. And the nice weather's not going to last too much longer either. Oh, oh, man. Hey. <laughs> That's terrific. That's Poor That's Dave. Terrific. He's a footnote at, right before the weather. And speaking of not lasting, oh, not lasting. This heat wave. Oh, oh the warm weather. God. Get the guy a uh, goddamn it. What well, does it have to be this bad? Does it have? Can't you just go? Hey, man, he gave it a good try. 
He's David fucking Lee goddamn I Roth, know. by the way. You know what I mean? Well. Give him a goddamn break. Come on. It's all about us today. You know what I... <laughs> I gotta say is that uh, <laughs> three months we finally <laughs> get long. We finally get some uh, coverage on TV, and that's that's the night that the the news reader has a bad day reading. She was really <laughs> true. She didn't want to tell that story. And you think that's what happened? Yeah, they could talk about serial killers, um, pedophiles, things like that with a straight face. Read it like it's nothing. The second they have to talk about us in any way, shape, or form, they get all tripped up because they just they they hate us. The news really doesn't like us. It's something we got to deal with. Okay. Why is that? There was a couple oh, times man. though they like they would just add their own commentary. Yeah. Oh, oh remember the famous one? Their parents must be proud. Their parents like, must be your proud. News guy, <laughs> I tagged that on the end of it. <laughs> Talk about we did some question how you were raised. I tagged that on the Dude, end. It's Thanks. a news story. They're doing a horrific story about us, but they do horrific stories like Anthony said on serial killers and what have you. And at the end of the story, the newsman looks seriously into the camera and just goes, "Their parents must be proud." Yeah, they don't say to say about a pedophile. This guy should be put to death. Well, you know, yeah, they, they do read the story, but I. I was I was watching MSNBC and they they go uh, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer's parents they were nice people <laughs> nice people <laughs> his unassuming his, family his parents did a good job and yeah, they tried they their best raised them up nice your parents they ain't shit nah <laughs> alright let's nah. see how the WB uh, handled this this uh, interesting news last night well shock jocks Opie and Anthony may be going home again returning to the network to fire them published reports say Greg Opie Hughes and Anthony Cumia will be brought back to CBS radio to replace David Lee Roth's dismal turn as a morning show host the spot of course vacated by Howard Stern yeah. Opie and Anthony lost their network gig back in 2002 uh -oh. after airing a live uh -oh. account of Here listeners having sex in St. Patrick's Cathedral Man. you might recall at the time Catholic League President William Donahue blasted the stunt Donahue now says he hasn't received any complaints about the two shock jocks during the time they've been on XM Satellite Radio and the Catholic League wishes them well and I'm sure that'll be the first thing they try to change when they get back on the air here. No. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. Jackass. God. How do they know how many how do they know David Lee Roth was was uh, uh dismal rating the ratings were horrific. How do you how, how do you do how do you, oh, what do, you Patrice, do? Patrice, it's so involved. It's the Arbitron rating system. They hand out diaries. Is it theoretical? Or is it actual, is it real? You know, you would think in this day and age, this day and age, that they would have some type of uh, technology involved, computers, something. They actually mail in the mailbox, paper mail, a diary, and you're supposed to keep that and write down what you listen to and when. And then when you're done, you send it back. Who, who's got the time for that? Exactly. Can Which means you believe you'll, you'll it? never, ever, seriously, you'll never get the black well, listeners no. under. You'll, no, we no, will no. never no, sign and send no. that shit back. Here's no. what happened. They have more time because they're not working and they... Uh, they'll, they'll send it in the fucking mail? Here's no, what happens. Won't. Here's what happens. Minority uh, radio stations do very well. Here's what happens. If they get a bunch of diaries back, they look and see where they came from. Now, let's say one month they look and go, hey, we got a great response from Whitey. Uh, uh, black guys aren't represented. They will then flood the black areas with diaries and pull back from the white areas. So now the black guys get a chance to write in, you know, the hip-hop stations. Uh, I don't know what else you listen to. That's the arbitrage. That's the that's to? the system. That's the system. So it's motherfuckers in mail David Lee writing, back his diaries. You gotta lick a stamp. You gotta. I don't. It's, and it's you motherfuckers, archaic. they've been bailing in the diaries. Hell yes. yeah, man. Because yeah. when they have a passion for something, they help you out. Right. Uh, by the way, I hope the ONA pass uh, took a lot of notes in the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Think about what you need to do. Down the road. I know, but I hope you take a lot of, you did a lot of reading and don't say another word. <laughs> so the Nielsen thing. I mean, I was the, supposed to read that thing. Uh, the, the Nielsen yeah, thing is different, right? Like, that's just not Nielsen one family is represents like 100,000 people. And that's hooked up onto your television set. It knows what you're watching. You don't have to write it down. But it just knows what one family's watching, and it just represents. I think they could like also uh, uh, do uh, what's in different rooms in the house now with the Nielsen. And yeah, one family represents, one person listening to the radio represents X amount of people. So, you know, 
You'll have a great month. We, we've had this happen to us. We do a great month of radio. We know we did really well. Right. Had a lot of calls, doing good, feeling good about it. And the ratings come in, and they're not as high as you think they should be. I think and it then should you be look, an exact fucking like, science, man. It, it should be. When, when your but job is at not. the line, because I'm thinking about, in case I get on the radio, and motherfuckers don't send in their diaries. No. I'm like, That's I got to listen to this motherfucker. It. <laughs> it's part of the stress of it. <laughs> Every day you have a diary uh, uh, thing where you're trying to get people to send in your diary. You can't. You know. You're not allowed. Hey, That's everybody, come on out. You yeah. can't. Send it's your against, diaries it's in. Against, it's against the law. Yeah. You cannot solicit. Diaries. Yeah, you cannot no, no. talk about the 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 actual you can't solicit people to fill you out can't diaries say, hey, do for this. yourself yeah oh, no. it's illegal oh. so you just gotta let them do their their job you do yours and hope for the best they listen to you on the station then they write you down that's it that's it hey uh josh from posthors.net anthony yeah we missed the obvious thing from uh seth in miami the uh, the uh howard stern fan right he he writes in his instant feedback you're scripted howard had jackie passing him notes and jokes for years what an ass that guy is. Yeah. We forgot about that. Ah. Hey, at the end of that news uh, piece, they talked about the Catholic League. The Catholic League. Wow. Well, the Catholic League, um, apparently very strong organization. When uh, when we had our little screw-up, Opie, as we like to call it, um, they jumped right in and uh, you know threatened to boycott uh, Infinity Broadcasting. And uh, Infinity it threatened uh, to file a complaint with the FCC. Uh, Infinity fired us. They dropped their com FCC complaint and pretty much went about their business. Bill it was Donahue pretty much done. was all over TV, and he was yeah. pissed. Bill Donahue spearheaded the whole thing. And, you know, you could say a lot, but this is what the guy does. He's the protector of the faith, you know? If somebody's bad-mouthing... The Catholic Church are doing anything. His job is to go out there and uh, kick a little ass. Kick a little ass for God is what he's doing. And um, when we got hired here at XM, uh, he was in the news one day for something. I think we were reading a story, and uh, he came off looking hypocritical about something. So we decided to try to give him a call and have him on the show. Lo and behold, he shows up you know, on the phone. And uh, we thought it was going to be a real cat fight, you know, a lot of yelling back and forth. But the guy was reasonable. We don't agree on a lot of stuff. But it was a very civil conversation that went back and forth. And by the end of it, we have no problem with each other. You know, we, he does what he does. We do what we do. Um, like I said, we certainly don't agree on a lot of things. Uh, but that's the way it is. Uh, I, we were glad to see he was open-minded enough to come on. I think he likes the spotlight, which mm -hmm. uh, is fine. Who doesn't? But uh, he came out with a press release yesterday about this uh, pending move, pending alleged move to CBS by this program. Uh, here it is. Opie and Anthony moved to CBS Radio. It's on the Catholic League news release and on their website. Uh, Catholic League President Bill Donahue commented ted, uh, today on news about a pending move to CBS Radio, uh, by CBS Radio, to hire talk show hosts Opie and Anthony. Uh, and quote, after I lashed out against Opie and Anthony for providing an on-air account of a sexual stunt at St. Patrick uh, Cathedral, why can't I read uh, today, Opie? Why can't I read? Because you were up uh, making copies of my documents. I was up too late so, making your goddamn so copies. So pass the ball. I'll do the Bill Donahue stuff. After I lashed out against Opie and Anthony for providing an on-air account of sexual uh, of a sexual stunt in St. Patrick's Cathedral in 2002, they were fired by Infinity Broadcasting. Maybe no one could read this stuff without uh, uh, the CBS enough. radio outlet. Once they were dumped, I withdrew the complaint that I had filed with the FCC and asked the FCC to drop its investigation. On August 5th, 2004, I issued a news release about the decision of XM Satellite Radio to pick up the duo beginning October 4th. At that time, I said, we wish Opie and Anthony well and trust they have learned their lesson. Now CBS Radio is set to bring them back on its free FM outlets. 
To those who say you can't go home again, I say nonsense. Hmm. This is Bill Donahue continuing. In the year and a half that Opie and Anthony have been on XM Satellite, not a single complaint has reached our office about anything they've said. Indeed, when the two shock jocks were picked up by XM, their producer called one morning and asked if I could go on the air with them. Though I had some reservations, I said yes and was immediately put through. They made it clear that they regretted the St. Patrick's stunt. We mixed it up for a bit and had a great time. In short, the Catholic League hopes Opie and Anthony have a great run on CBS Radio. You couldn't ask for a better yeah, uh, release great. from the Catholic League. Uh, but this story gets better. Well, Opie. While I was I, turning uh, off all my phones and getting some sleep. Opie's turning off his phones, getting sleep. I decided, why not give a call to uh, Bill Donahue? So uh, I'm at home. I rang him up. Uh... His secretary said he was uh, doing some kind of interview at the time, so I, I left my number. And ten minutes later, he called me back. Bill Donahue. I'm like, oh, Bill, how you doing? Uh, said to him, just want to thank you for your uh, press release. I go, that was really uh, fair of you. Uh, you know, this is a second chance for us, and I appreciate what you're doing. Um, and, you know, uh, thank you. He was very uh, open to it. Uh, wished us well, said to say hi, Opie. And uh, I asked him uh, if he'd come on the show. He said, yeah, he'll come on. So we want to have him on the show. In the near future? In the very near future, In I think. In the very near future? Yeah. So, yeah. very good. There it is. The Catholic League. In short, the Catholic League hopes Opie and Anthony have a great run on CBS Radio, as, do, uh, as does everybody else. <laughs> Except a couple of people, I guess. Yeah, well, we got that audio right Hoo -hoo. here. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna go crazy. You know that, right? Yeah, because he understands how how big this is. Because we get to talk to his listeners. Yeah, he can't talk to ours. Look, ninety <laughs> ninety percent. It's been stated. Ninety percent of his listeners didn't follow him to uh, serious. Right, it's a fact. So that's a lot of people. And you read the papers, uh, we read a lot of the industry papers and the regular newspapers, they've said they don't know where his listeners went. Same thing when we got the boot. They did a study, tried to find out where our listeners went. They couldn't figure it out. No station had a huge jump like his listeners went here or there or something. So uh, where are they? That's a lot of people. They're waiting for some type of entertainment. Unfortunately for David Lee Roth, he wasn't it. Should I play the David Lee Roth song again? No, don't play it again. <laughs> Why? You know something? I've heard nice things about Dave. I've never met the guy, but I've only heard like nice things about it. Like he's a real nice guy. He's spacey and out there, but you know, he's a rock star. The guy was the definitive rock star of uh the eighties. And he you know, he's a little out there in his own little world. Uh, I don't know what to believe as far as what I've read in the paper about uh, fights and stuff that he's had with management and stuff. But everybody I've met that has worked directly with him has said he's a really nice guy, just put in a situation that was uh, just about impossible to win. That's all well and good, but that's like, you know how Van Halen is, is always looking for a new lead singer? Always. All of a sudden, I just raised my hand like, hey, I could do it. Shh. <laughs> Opie, the, those aren't signed yet. The singing for Van Halen contract. Oh, when does that contract? That announcement <laughs> is going to be made Monday. But how Opie and Anthony, the new singers for Van Halen. That's the big but announcement. But how ridiculous would that Can't be? Can't wait to see the Photoshop. If I, all of a sudden I said, hey, I know I can do it. Just give me a shot. And they actually said, okay. There's a lot of guys. Do it. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys. See? <laughs> and I actually can do it a little better than I. Come on. Actually, much better than I. Come on, Dave. But there's a lot of guys in entertainment that think they could do radio, and then they get into it and realize, oh, my God, I don't want to work this freaking hard. you got to work hard at this, believe it or not. We, and we, we joke about it, but you got to work hard and, get, and, and be dedicated to this radio crap. We'll be working a lot harder. We'll be working a lot harder. I was listening a little bit today, um, and he was... Uh he was just talking about how he changed his entire lifestyle. Like, he yeah. had a whole system of how he he figured, like, and I understood it, too, because it's like to get up at 5. Yeah. He goes, I have to change my entire lifestyle because if you do radio show at, say, 3 in the afternoon, you don't get up at 1 
to go do three. You're mm-hmm. up at 10 or something. Yeah. And you're already starting your day. So he, he took this philosophy where he's like, he gets up at one in the morning. But to change his entire lifestyle to say, like, to make six in the morning his midday. Oh, as I got As opposed to five in the morning to make it yeah, to that, get up and go, oh. That don't oh. work. That never works. Yeah, that don't work. Humans are supposed to sleep at night. I, I did overnight radio for three years. It almost killed me. I, I never figured it out. I tried everything. But it just doesn't work. Didn't Dave's uh, uh, ads say, you call it mornings, he calls it after hours? <laughs> yes. Well, so, I mean, <laughs> I mean, he changed his lifestyle. <laughs> he changed his entire lifestyle for, for the system. Meaning, just talking about what it takes. It's just yeah. like, what are you trying to f- do to figure this whole thing out? And you, you figure it out by doing it, kind of thing it's going rough. on. And he, he just, you know, Patrice, just didn't, you, you know. never figure it out. Nope. I've talked well, to morning guys for from my entire radio career. Someone I uh, I love dearly, brother Weez. You never get used to this. You, you, you never get you used don't. to this. No one gets. Used Sometimes to it. you get a nice streak in where you have a couple of weeks like oh, I'm feeling good, I'm sleeping right, eating right, and then all of a sudden it's you're you're just constantly going against the grain. My left eye is my left. I'm blind in my left eye right now because <laughs> it's too early, right? <laughs> I got him. I went and uh, I went to sleep. I took uh, I ate some food, took uh, some uh, uh, Steve O's oxy powder, Uh-oh. which really hasn't kicked in yet. And uh, oh, when that oh, kicks no. in, so look I, out! I go to sleep at uh, I'm in the bed. Like I'm, I'm done with it because I'm, look, I'm looking for a house or looking for a condo or whatever. So I, I You're a big boy, big boy now. <laughs> so I'm out at one in the afternoon, drive, driving the real estate guy around. By the way, oh. in my fucking car. I don't know if you're supposed to be doing that, but that's how fucking stupid I am. I'm driving him. Always follow. It, it, so you always follow the <laughs> so real estate. I'm, I'm, I'm get home at eight, and I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, I'm here at eight. I get to relax. I'm gonna go to bed at nine. I lay down at nine. Okay, here comes 10, here comes 11, took the oxy powder, here comes 12, I'm a little scared and I'm a shit on myself, so I'm like not sleeping, so at 12.15 I start the doze, wake up a little bit more, a thought comes in my head, for some reason I'm addicted to go to IMDB um, to just see what people are doing, and the end of Animal House came on, so I'm just, I got my fucking thing and I'm typing up Steven first, just to see what the fuck he's what doing. What the hell he's been up what to, the Flounder? Fuck is Steven f- What's Flounder doing to this motherfucker? <laughs> so I'm, I'm Googling Flounder on IMDb. His son is a uh, uh, composer, by the way. Oh, I did not <laughs> know that. He composes like goofy shit, like he's really? a composer for goofy movies. So I'm going through that. One o'clock, I fall asleep a little bit. At, at, at four, my body wakes me up to go take a piss, you know, uh. and. I'm like, you motherfucker. And my left eye has not woken up yet. I cannot. I am completely. I can't see. Still twitching. See? I'm but- having problems breathing. I'm having problems. Th- it's just. It's ungodly. It and I don't believe that people need to fucking sleep at night because I sleep fine in the day oh. till 4.30 in the afternoon, <laughs> nigga. <That's-> <laughs> when I get home, I can crap right out. Just pass right out. But you can't. Because then you're up all night. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, when you go home from this and you feel really tired, you know, you could maybe sneak in a nap. This is the way you're supposed to do it. Sneak in a half hour, 45 minute nap. But you're so tired, you're like, ah, fuck it. I, I got to just sleep two or three hours. And then you do that, and then you can't sleep that night, and and then it, the cycle, you know, starts up. It's horrific. But uh, anyway, uh, getting back to the oxy powder, we, we, we warned you about that. That is it's not... nothing happening yet. I think I, are you supposed to take the shit with an empty stomach? Patrice. I had a, I eaten food. I took four capsules. I tried it for three or four days, man. Stuff was coming out of me. It was jello. It was jello just falling you out of me. You don't do it anymore? You just... Hell no. What, isn't it good for you to, to... If you listen to Steve, who's on every freaking supplement that's been banned by the Major League Baseball... <laughs> Don't tell me Oxy Potter. <laughs> I, I, Oxy Potter, I, I looked it right up. It says it's vegetables. If he's telling yeah. you it's okay, sure. I'm sure there was yeah. a time they said, Barry, this is okay. First of Fine. all, I started to call Steve on the phone when he gave me the pills. I put it in my pocket. I got home. I looked in there. They're big white pills. I was like, Steve... I've never seen anything that's just big white fucking like big white like you like no you seen in a, in a in a, in a, in a uh, uh, like a uh, Abbott and Costello movie <laughs> yeah. where they tried to make the horse take yeah. just a white pill. I'm like, what the fuck is in this? The first sign 
should have been the label that just says pills, pills, <laughs> oxy powder. And I'm and I took it like an asshole. But usually when I do shots, I cut the tops off of um those plastic cat like uh, uh capsules. Oh yeah, I'll cut the top and pour the powder in really? and drink. Why? But you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, let Oops. it dissolve. Let it dissolve naturally. To, sometimes they're time. It's a time release. Well, thing. I think there's something wrong with my gut, man. Like I still yeah. feel full from last. I think there's something de desperately wrong with me oh right my now. God. You, uh, could listen, listen, you could just be percolate. You could just start to be percolate. Let me tell I you. feel like I ate. <laughs> Oh, Listen, God, let man. me tell you what's going on right now. Let me tell you what's going on. You're you got a full belly, right? Right. You you threw that oxy powder in there. It's working kind of like Drano. It's slowly yeah, working it's slowly, through the clog. It's making a passage, and then everything is just gonna fall out of you. And you're not gonna be able to hold it in, bro. You are not gonna be able to hold it in. See, I, I didn't realize, Patrice, that uh, you said you felt stu you still felt full. Right? I still feel I okay. feel bloated. Kind of what's happening right now is it's expanding your intestines. Oh yeah, that's the other thing it does. Yeah. So it falls out like Jello. Yeah, it always oh, pushing my my yeah. fucking it, it, yeah. my it, colon open. It expands. Yeah. It expands his everything, so then everything can just fall out. Basically, it's, it produces a lot of gases. That. It produces right. a lot of gases, so that everything loosens up. Oh and just, boy, just shoots out like Drano. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Martini Steve has new muscles every day. Wait, he? eh. His arm is better than it was two days ago. Nah, it's all tattooed up. Fucking going bananas over here. Steve's so, up. He's getting cut. Uh, so yeah, so something's up. gonna happen. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah I happens. love Steve. I mean, if you when should I take another hit? I took one ten ten eight ten. Take I, it tonight. Yeah. Don't do it when I get home. Uh, well, if you have plans, don't take it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have if plans I, that don't involve I'm thinking about trying to fuck my, fuck my girl. Right? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. One That's down, a... one downstroke, everything's hitting the ceiling. <laughs> 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 I'm going to, I'm going to oh. come and shit. And fire one out my ass while I'm coming. Yeah. Be like, digging you out in 500 years like Pompeii. You know, I'm looking, for, you I'm looking for new sexual experiences <laughs> and shit. Oh, oh, and I'm <laughs> shit on myself. I wouldn't do that unless you wanted your bedroom. <laughs> Painted brown, man. Yeah. So you really, it's really like that, right? I, I, I was like, no way. I took yeah, it at eleven, and I couldn't. That's, I think that was a little, a little bit of the reason why, because I remember you guys were telling me that shit. It was a little bit of the reason why I couldn't sleep really good, like, cause I'm going, okay, all right, I feel it bubbling, baby. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, okay. Just a little Go gassy. To sleep. But now it's like I feel like I ate a sandwich this morning. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's no that's sandwich. It. That's, that's it. That's, that's all air. That's oxy gas. <laughs> it's ready to release. <laughs> and just, yeah. It's falling off the sides as we speak. How yeah. long did it take for it to hit? <laughs> you. I honestly don't remember. I took it uh, at night, and that morning all hell broke loose. Is it working? So it works all like a hell. snow plow. It can. It can. <laughs> yeah. You how, feel it, how, and then it just like pushes. Yeah. yeah. How late just, did you take it? Uh, Ten. Uh, okay, 10. you're gonna. Yeah, you're ready to go soon. So yeah, you might have to. You're play. not going to make it to the end of the show. You might not make it to the end of the show. Just remember, if you, if you feel like subtle gas coming on, you might want to hit the bathroom. <laughs> oh boy! And don't just, attempt. Oh, don't try to don't, sneak one don't out. Don't try to sneak one. No, out. no, we heard about it, that. You still? Uh, not. I'm not taking it right now. But every so often, I'll like you know do a cleanse. So and and Patrice, put myself through it. If you feel like a fart, yeah. Just go to the bathroom. Don't try to sneak one out. At this point, it'll all come out. At this point, do not we attempt heard. to fart. <laughs> But I, I don't, it's not like, it's almost like I want that to happen because I know I got beef in my stomach from at least 86. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. Oh, that whole red meat thing. It's, it's like that star we was talking about. It's like, I, I know when I shit, I see the past. <laughs> That's the past. I go back in time. <laughs> oh, shit. That's the day I got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> they show you pictures online of people that take this stuff and that uh, that just pass these huge snake-like looking oh, horrible things God. from their intestines that it just impacted whatever. Oh, I just want to do that. I really want to badly. I'm scared that it's not going to work on Isn't, me. Which doesn't, I, doesn't a high colonic do that? I don't know. I just I want I, I was going to go my roommate who's deeply deeply into trying to be healthy like yeah. and he goes I think he got like five colonics in, in a day or something. I went to the colonic office, and, you know, you get there, and for some reason, you know, who Puerto Rican uh, secretaries bug me. You know, they come in, they don't care, and you'll come in, and I go, excuse me, I'm here to get a fucking hose in my ass. <laughs> You know, and uh, sit down, fill this down, and there's some guy watching. And what made me leave is some fucking dude sitting down watching a program about the the procedure. And yeah. you know, he has a he earphones on, and it's just, 
you know, and then it's this process is you got to come back. I'm like, I'm not coming back to get this hose in my ass. I don't, I don't want to. It just made me too nervous, you man. You want one day, you go in. One and done. Yeah, like just okay, blast it. It's almost something that you want to try yourself. You, you know, you can. I look. just take the equipment home? Yeah, you know, I, I can stick a hole in my ass. <laughs> Can't turn up no water, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still arguing if that even uh, works. And well, if, shit and if comes out. I know, but they're arguing. What does that mean, though? Yeah, what is does it really, really mean? you know cleansing you and getting rid of the toxins better and all that? I hope. I hope they find so out. People say, so some people say some people say it, it, it's certainly a very good thing to do, and others say no way. It doesn't doesn't make a. I tried psyllium husk and sh the the. Yeah. You know that's yeah. that's yeah. It, that's the, supposed to be the natural. Oh, the natural way to clear That's supposed to be the supernatural shit way to no. do it. Uh, for Why don't we take another quick break? Yeah, I got to take a leak. And uh, we got some, uh, I gotta take a leak, some I more audio about what's going on, okay? <laughs> right. And uh, once again, if you're just tuning in, a lot of people have lots and lots of questions. All questions will be answered on Monday. We promise, okay? Uh huh. And this is a very, very good thing. And uh, you just got to trust us on this one. Yes. Please. I think you talked it up. Please. Uh oh. Huh? Drum roll, please. <laughs> Just gotta trust us. We have many examples of uh, people thinking they knew what was best, and we proved them wrong. Remember when we came to XM? Oh, it was so it's gonna suffer. Yeah. Part of the beauty was how they skirt around things. Yeah, that was it. We heard, uh, uh, oh, uh, now that this show is gonna be uncensored completely, uh, you know. Uh, the fun was just listening to them try to work around the words, and they could be more clever that way. Remember all those people? And now we hear, oh, great, it's going to be a watered-down version. I'm not paying for this. I do. Oh, would you relax? You don't even know how it's going to work yet. Do you know the minds it took to figure out the formula that will make this work? Oh, no. Here he goes. Are you oh, kidding? Shit. I gotta pee. Oh, shit. Oh, I got to take wait, a leak. Are you leak. kidding? You feeling something? Get shit on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Get a cell phone. <laughs> oh my god. Get a cell phone. Patrice has left the studio. Sell out. I'm reading that a lot. No, they not didn't. a lot. Just you know, the uh, instant feedback. Um, the opportunities this uh, gives us, uh, like. I can't even begin. A lot to of tell people you. are under the impression we're leaving. We're not leaving. Satellite. We're, we're not. not. Leaving. Stop it. Anyway, we're pioneers, Opie. We are uh, uh, doing something uh, revolutionary here. Uh, no one's ever gone uh, from terrestrial to satellite and then uh, back to terrestrial. Uh, I am doing that. Oh, wait a minute. See, you know, if he, if he just wanted to go for, uh, for the paycheck. Go for the paycheck. This, this was the move. Everyone knew it. Yeah. Here we just had to bide our time. Here's the move. This was the move. This was the true move if you really like doing radio. If you want to go for a paycheck, yeah, God bless you. And it is great for satellite. I mean, a lot of the people are writing, uh, a lot of the trades um, are writing that it's unprecedented that such a huge company would look to satellite for talent. Right. Uh, Danny, in the bathroom. Hey, what's up, guys? What are we Patrice, tell, uh, what's going on in there? Oh, well, Patrice is in a stall. Uh, let me try and get an update. Patrice, how's things going? Uh, fuck, man. Get the fuck out of here, man. Fuck, man. Dude, Patrice ain't this kind of guy. He's not like Jimmy Norton. No. Uh, they're pretty, they're pretty impressive. It's not an octopus bottle. I think it's just a regular trying to get yesterday's sandwich out. All right, so yeah, he's convinced it's not the oxy powder. He's just trying to get some old food out of there. <laughs> some old food. <laughs> Does he have any action going on? Patrice, you, you got any action going on? Nah, not really. Not really. All right. <laughs> Whatever that means. All right. Hang out outside the stall. Any updates, give us a call. <laughs> Danny from in the bathroom. So throughout our careers, uh, other people thought they knew best for us. Yeah. I remember back at BAB when I went to uh, when I went to Jeff and Bob. Jeff and Bob? Yes. I'm uh, now working with Anthony full time, and unless you give us a better shift, we are going elsewhere. Right. They let us go. Dumbest move they ever made. Then we go to Boston, and we decide, you know what? Yeah, we like to rock, but we also like to talk. So we start talk. Well, actually, when we first got there, yeah. Where's Liz? 
Where's Liz? Liz Wild. Where's right Liz? Where's us. Liz? That's Cause, all we heard. Because they knew better. Where's Liz? You stink. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So then we turned those people around. And then we decided, you know what? Now we need to talk a little more. Even yeah. though we love playing the Alice in Chains and the Rage and all that. And the Corn and what have you. All the bands Great that, time for me, of so. that era, right? So we start talking. And then Bruce Mittman walks in one day. Boys, uh boys what is this, a talk show? Talk show, boys. Uh... Yes, you know something, Bruce? Good idea. Yes. Yes, we, it is. We like talking, and you don't understand that. And if you don't let us, we'll figure out a way to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> That's right. So he thought he knew best. He yeah. thought he needed to come in and shut us up mm -hmm. and just play the music. And we said, no, we continue to talk. He didn't get it. So then we yeah. moved on to N.E.W. <laughs> <laughs> Look. We... <laughs> In our whole career, I can really count only one big mistake we've made. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a biggie. But uh, other than that, you must have trust in us. We know what is best for the show. Not just for us, stupid. For the show. We're not just going to do something that is good for us. It's got to be good for the show, the listeners. That's why we do these things. Well, in the end, if it's uh, good for the show, it's good for us. Yeah. See, that's how we always look at it. Other people look at it's good for me and then go, oh, yeah, but the show's going to suffer. Ah, ah, whatever. No, we figure out a way where it can all work out and everyone's happy. There, You can't make everyone happy. There are going to be some people that are pissed. It's just going to happen. But uh, for the most part, this works. We'll, uh, all the details you want to hear Monday uh, but it works. It makes sense. It's fine. No, it I'll, I'll give you this little th hint. You're going to get a lot more Opie and Anthony. That's it. A lot more. Don't worry about it so much. And a lot more from uh, the people that help us out. Um, know what it's like? We just kicked an anthill. We just kicked an anthill. Right. Everything was all nice. That line organized. was going. Dun, 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 dun. They were bringing the grasshopper back into the... Uh, uh, into the nest, right? One had a leg. How does he carry it? He's so small. <laughs> <laughs> and we just decided to kick the anthill. What happens yeah. at that point? Oh, everyone they run around like and, crazy. And now everyone's just trying to figure everything out. They're all touching antennas going, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> they don't know what the fuck. Why, why do we do? They're all over the place. But before you know I, it. And they're like, where do we even begin? And then a couple weeks go by and all of a sudden, guess you, what? You look at the anthill. It's all nice and back to dun, 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 dun. It's dismantling another cricket. But then there's uh, a nicer anthill. Right, it's a bigger anthill. The and, colony has expanded. And bigger people now uh, visit the anthill. Right, much better visitors to the <laughs> anthill. Right. <laughs> you get much better. It's, it's better for all the ants involved. That's right. And we don't have to eat uh, grasshopper leg anymore. Right. Now we're dragging in, you know, prime rib. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Just... Trust in us, people. We've always known what's best for the show, more so than any of the fans. So, so don't worry so much. So to all, enjoy. The, to all the ants out there right now, yeah, just pick up a little little granular of uh, dirt yeah, and start moving back toward Move the... Move it out of the way of the hole. <laughs> just start building the hole again. Get the hole <laughs> opened again. That's <laughs> paramount. Your job is to take one lousy granular and move right. it out. Exactly. And then we will rebuild and before you and know move it, on. big fat cricket parts <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> All right, we'll take a little uh, break. Mm -hmm. We'll see how Patrice did in the bathroom. We got more very interesting audio to play right after. Really not a fan of seeing how Patrice did in the bathroom, but I got to piss. He's just about done. I, I would imagine. <laughs> Great. We're back with the Opie and Anthony program on XM Satellite Radio. The OA virus is not right, man. <laughs> it's spreading across America. What did David Lee Roth do? Come uh, on. Thanks to XM Satellite Radio. They have been nothing but great for us. Hey, Pete, what's up? What's going on, b -b boys? Hey, Opie, yeah. I got to tell you. Yeah. I got turned on to you guys in December. I got a radio. Yeah. You are the funniest SOB. You, your ad libs. The, your voiceovers, you make me laugh every day. I don't care what you guys do as long as you're on the radio somewhere. You guys rock. Voiceovers. And fuck Howard, he sucks. Uh, all right. You guys are putting a hurting on that boy. I love it, man. It's great. Especially yesterday with the b -b -b boys. <laughs> you're all over the map, <laughs> sir. All right. Uh, thank you, Pete. Hi, right, man. All right, there goes Pete. Um, I'm just cricket. talking about us again. 
And yeah. this one's really good because he interrupted a very, very serious story or a, a big story. I haven't even read the paper, so I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I guess some Chinese lady was yelling and screaming at the Chinese president. Yeah, the, Ch the head of China or something was coming by for a visit. And um, do you know that there's a whole protocol at the White House for that? Like, the, the president comes over, and because of, of all the um, civil rights violations in China, the president can show, like, yeah, I want to do business with you. We like to trade back and forth. It's profitable for both countries. But you can't really be one of our bestest, goodest world friends. So they took uh, the Chinese guy, and they just had him for lunch. Well, they didn't have him for lunch. They invited him uh, to lunch. Now, And it, where was his lunch? Was it in a... Um... It's like in the White House somewhere. Oh, it wasn't in a top-secret location no. north of Manhattan? No. <laughs> Shut up. It was in the White House. Just showing my ad lib skills. They're terrific. <laughs> when you went, b -b boys, I was dying. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently, if you're a buddy pal chum, yeah. like Blair or something comes to visit, uh, you have the dinner. There's the big White House dinner. So it's almost and like... And that would be in um, the Ritz-Carlton. Cause okay, shut up. <laughs> they have a dinner in the White House, and uh, that it means that you're like a real buddy, real pal, real friend. Right. So uh, they were doing this lunch thing, which is kind of a throwaway. Uh, it lets everybody know that the president really doesn't agree with everything that this guy's doing, but working on it. So uh, the president was out there, and I guess because all I understood was Falun Gong. I guess it was some Falun Gong person. The same people that are on the streets. They're on in the streets protesting here, like we're beating them and putting them in cages. There's Falun Gong in China, a uh, little organization there in China uh, that the Chinese government apparently really can't stand and uh, locks them up, tortures them. I hear it's a yoga movement. Yeah, it's like some kind of yoga thing, but it's taken on more than that. It's like, you know. Like, Scientology was a fucking science fiction book for a while, too. And now, you know, it's a religion. Falun Gong, same thing. Some kind of yoga thing that turned into this more religion They're always on 42nd and thing. West Side. West Side yeah. Just kind they of move around. They, they put themselves in cages. And... They uh, they look like they're beaten. The makeup is terrific on those people. Very good makeup. I don't know who's doing the injuries, but they look authentic. They look very authentic. Yeah, they that's, look like they've been pummeled. That's terrific. By some Chinese army guys. I'm thinking Steven Spielberg might be involved. Yeah. Or you think that industrial light and magic is coming yeah, over? And it's just terrific. And you talking about the chick that that was doing her thing yesterday? Yeah. yeah. So she unloaded on this guy. I think we got the audio at the uh, White House. Yeah. They showed that live of them taking her away. Poor lady. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's not going to be happy where they put her. I'm sure. Can we have her, please? He's going to ask for her. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to ask her. We take uh, this bitch. Where's she? Uh, <laughs> can we we take her home? <laughs> oh boy, I forget about she. No. Here's uh, the audio of the Chinese lady. I got more audio of the lady from yesterday outside the White House. For many days I didn't bring him here because I suffer when he bites me. He bites me in my vagina. When I'm walking and he sees other dog, he right away, he jumps on my vagina because he gets so crazy. But he doesn't know who I am. He forgets everything. And he, he bites the Labrador and his penis. I don't want him to bite my Labrador and the penis. My Labrador is a baby. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherfucker! <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Was she saying President Bush, uh, Bush, stop him? 
It sounded like she was like, kill him. It almost sounded like she said, President it's, Bush, it's, kill it's him. It sounded like that. She said, kill him. Yeah, but kill him. Asking Bush. Like, Bush, I, I can't do that. I send troops in to do that. I can't. I, I can't just kill him. He's my guest. I, I can't just kill him. Come on, lady. Go ahead now. We're trying to make a relationship with these lady. gooks. Uh, the gooky-eyed people, very important in America, is I can't just start killing people. <laughs> so um, here's the story on IMIS just a little while ago. Because if the president of the United States has to say, I'm right. sorry to Hu Jintao, uh, that puts things at a slightly uneven footing. Do you know about Opie and Anthony coming back to CBS <laughs> Are you? I'm not, a, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> This is some, uh, what? She works for White House reporter. White House reporter or works for President uh, Bush personally? There I go. Hymas is just. You know about um, Opie and Anthony? Uh, <laughs> he's just obsessed with the whole Opie and Anthony thing. <laughs> That's great, man. He's more obsessed about the Opie and Anthony thing than you and I are. I love it. Anthony coming back to CBS? Are you? I'm not, a, I'm not aware of that. Aha. Uh -huh. Good work, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> well, they are. She's only the White House reporter. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you wouldn't be. Everybody else knew, apparently. <laughs> so, you know There's who? only so much I can handle on a given morning. <laughs> Do you know who they are? Uh, I think vaguely. Okay. This, I'm looking at a picture. Is, are, are these the gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, that's not Yasser Arafat's son on the left. <laughs> that's Anthony. <laughs> oh, well, aren't they crappy young men? Yeah, they're well, we like them, so. Terrific. So this is good news? Yeah, it's great news. Yasser. Wonderful. <laughs> do, they also? Have, uh, do they have your sort of view of the world? Uh -huh. <clears throat> so do you. Maybe. <clears throat> a little, uh, <laughs> kind of a slightly different show. But they're very good. Well, I will. Uh, I'll take that as uh, as a nod that I need to tune in and find out about them. And well, well no, no, I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, I was having a good old time they with this. Are a pisser, man. That's great. <sighs> what paper you is this? Gotta love it. How do you not love a guy that's been in radio that long, and can can goof around like that? Yeah. Doesn't take himself or his show so seriously. He's talking with, you know, White House reporters and everything, and he, he goes into a goof like that. Okay, but it's brilliant. He doesn't mind. Uh, oh, wow, the Boston papers are coming in now. <laughs> Tom Brady. The Boston Herald and uh, the Boston Globe now. Mm. Wow. Cool. The Manatees do a, a thing on it, or is it actual news? Uh, Boston the Man Herald. The Manatees still working for them? Yeah. Jessica Heslam, or something like that. Mm. Whip it up, Boston. Ah. It won't come as a shock, but after a near four-month disastrous run, CBS Radio is reportedly axing aging rocker David Lee Roth and replacing him with raunchy talk jocks Opie and Anthony. It's a smart move. I think they are accomplished practitioners of the hot talk genre, Ooh. said Michael Harrison, publisher of Talkers Magazine. The Bad Boys show will return to traditional radio in Boston's WBCN-FM nearly four years after CBS canned the pair for broadcasting a couple having tea in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York. <laughs> Why don't we just switch it to that? That's good. Huh? Having tea. Having tea, yes. They were sipping in a, uh, it, it's, it strictly says, bring in no food. I was, uh, I'm, I'm on fire with my ad living today, I gotta tell I you. I can tell you. Uh, the duo oh, have a storied history in the hub. They were first yanked off the local airwaves, WAF, in Yank. 1998 for their infamous April Fool's Day prank on Mayor Thomas Menino. Old hat. The twosome told listeners the mayor had died in a car crash while vacationing in Florida. Menino yesterday declined comment. Uh, the, he just couldn't comment. He was trying. <laughs> Uh, while at WAF, the pair launched the WOW campaign, or Whip Them Out The WOW Wednesdays. campaign, which was supposed to uh, take over all of Europe. That's right. But uh, they got us to Stalingrad. Uh, yeah, we barely made it to Springfield. The, the campaign. WOW campaign? <laughs> while at AAF, the pair launched the WOW campaign, or Whip Them Out Wednesdays. Mm -hmm which encouraged women to bare their breasts to motorists. But the campaign was cut short following outrage from Mayor Menino. The wow is not the thing that the big highway. 
Pope and Anthony turned up on XM Satellite Radio in October 2004, becoming one of the most popular shows on its 170 channels. Roth replaced Howard Stern on the East Coast after he left for Sirius Satellite Radio. XM will now syndicate Opie and Anthony's show. They're, they are Stern's uh, staunch rivals on those stations. Staunch. WBCN's ratings have spiraled downhill with the former Van Halen frontman oh. behind the mic. Hold on, hold on. Read that line again. I get to use this. It's very rare. WBCN's ratings have spiraled downhill <laughs> with the former Van Halen frontman behind the mic. And a little wacky. Roth has fought with his bosses over his morning show's format. BCN and CBS declined comment yesterday. Tom Taylor, editor of Inside Radio, said Boston has never really forgotten the duo. It's a proven act, he says. Boston's a great, savvy radio market that enjoys talent, enjoys freshness, and enjoys wit. Mm. I think Boston will be a good match for them. Again. Third time's a charm, Boston. Oh, <laughs> motherfuckers. <crap. laughs> Jesus Christ, we're like grunions. Boston is we definitely... We just keep coming back to spawn. Boston is definitely the city that's got to be the most pissed at us. Yeah. We were there. We were gone. Three we were times. Back, we were gone. And maybe we're back again. And then all of a sudden, hey, baby, we're back. Oh, you know, I was just starting to get along without you, you bastards. But we're back. Yes. Let's say hi to Bruce in Louisiana. Louisiana. Hey, Bruce. Hey, when I am said Yasser Arafat's son, fucking I got an instant visual and fucking <laughs> laughed so hard I about wrecked this fucking truck. <laughs> Who said that on his show? <laughs> I missed it just a second ago. He said, Anthony, uh, he said the guy yeah, on the left I, isn't It was yes, Bernie. Right it was Bernie. Yeah, Bernie's, Bernie's a funny, funny motherfucker, oh, man. I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch the voice. But God I fucking, damn. I got an instant visual and almost wrecked the fucking truck. That was really funny, man. That was fucking brilliant. I love you guys. Congratulations. Fucking tear it up. One, well, there's one, nothing to congratulate us on. One of know. the one of the yeah. best Bernie lines ever. I watch, I was watching Imus at MSNBC. I hope I don't fuck this up, but uh, Imus had a cowboy hat on, and then he had one of those uh, what are the, what are they called bolos or it's something? It's a uh, bolo or a bolo uh, tie or something. We wear out west. And then he had a, a shirt yeah. that was kind of girlish underneath it. Yeah, and, it's uh, called a fag shirt. And Bernie, <laughs> yeah, 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 just shut up. Bernie yeah, turns sure. to Imus and says that he looks like Lady Bird Johnson. <laughs> At a hoedown. <laughs> I spit up cereal that morning, man. You know, it's not often you can fit in a Lady Bird Johnson reference. I, oh, I man. believe that's how it went down or something uh, something like that. I, I, I don't know if I've ever laughed harder at... Uh, that is funny. At something on the radio. They're a genuinely funny show, and how they mix that with uh, politics amazes me. Yeah. Matt in Cleveland, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Hey, uh, I thought it was really ironic and funny. I don't know who planned it out, but during the 2 o'clock uh, Worst of yesterday, they happened to play your first show on XM, and there was a little part about Bob Eatman telling you guys not to burn any bridges, and I believe Anthony said something about, ah, oh, we're never going back. I just thought it was kind of ironic and funny. Yeah, I you... think E-Rock's being uh, a little clever with the archives. Was E-Rock being clever with or the archives? Or is it Danny, or is it Derek? somebody? Or Travis? Nathaniel? Yeah, we were having a conversation with Bob Eatman, and... Uh... I said, in what universe are we ever going to be working for a CBS again? And uh, I go, what are you living in, bizarro world, Bob? I don't think it was done purposely, if anything. It was probably just a coincidence. Oh. Really? It, was, it was great, guys. All i got to say is the future looks bright. I'm loving it. Punching out. All right, thank you. There he goes, uh, Matt. I want to comment on the boys' uh, mustaches. It's this mustache is fantastic. day on the Opie and Anthony program. You know, I, I, I'm looking, and Danny's... I really am just, I'm drawn to Danny's. Everyone else's I could look at, and it's its kind of, <laughs> Travis, oh my Travis's God. looks ridiculous, because it's like a kid put on a fake mustache. <laughs> yeah, the guys are doing mustache day. Oh, the mustache day. We were supposed to be part of this, but unfortunately. But Jesus Christ, we got to maybe talk to somebody. We had, a, uh, yeah, we have some things to do. So can't yeah. be mustache day. We can't on do Hannity. <laughs> we can't do mustache day on Hannity and Gold. No, I don't think Sean Hannity gets mustache day. <laughs> uh, wow. But, uh, Danny's is great. You know what Danny's going for here? I finally figured it out. The old oldie time weightlifter at the circus mustache, where uh, he's wearing that oldie time swimsuit with the stripes, 
and, and the mustache curls at the end. <laughs> yeah, big barbells. Yeah. And then you got uh, good old Nathaniel. Yeah, Than. Than went for the fog hat 1977 <laughs> look. I like it. Whoa, yeah. nice mic. It's also a kind of Metallica uh, early 80s. James Hetfield. James Hetfield. Without the long hair. Going on. Really something I could walk into any bar in America, go up to a lady and be like, want to fuck? And she'll say yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> just looks good. I think the Cougars would love you. Oh, man. You'd be good in one of those. Uh, yeah, just like a rag bar. A corner pub. <laughs> Well, thanks. <laughs> and then Travis, I don't, I don't know how. To I don't know what's going on there. It's a regular mustache. It's think. just a standard it's cop a mustache. Mm -hmm. <laughs> way, to, way, to take, way to take oh, that yeah. chance, Travis. <laughs> yeah, a milk toast mustache. <laughs> Danny and I are going to do something special. This yeah, we have a little surprise is. for you guys yeah. before the end of the show. Oh, well, I, I, what could you <laughs> boy, boy, I wonder what that could be. It's the group shot I will not be participating in. Boy, I want, yeah, because the fan <laughs> actually thinks he has a career somewhere else. Yeah. The one that will ruin any chance of political career or yes. anything else. There yeah. you go. All right, so mustache day. There's a happening. flag on my desk that you might want to hold up when you take that picture. <laughs> that Got that in the mail the other the other day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, that's a very good question. You know, where's Jimmy? Why hasn't he called the show today? It's a big day. He's in Chicago playing a couple different clubs over the weekend. We should try to get him on the phone. Is Ben working today? <laughs> <laughs> See him ad libbing all over the place. It's unbelievable. Uh, Dan in New York, what's up? Oh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say uh, congrats for your uh, supposed move to uh uh, -uh. And, uh, is uh, Jimmy going to finally get that 50 grand? Oh, my God. Sweet hey. justice for Jimmy, yeah. How about that? Yeah, I believe Jimmy will be getting his 50 Thanks, grand. Thanks, guys. Remember his Punch 50 out. grand that he uh, got japped at? Of? All right. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, the Stern audio. Good old, uh, good old Howie. <clears throat> the king of the spin. Yeah. The king of the spin. Ooh -hoo. We'll see how... Uh, you, know, you know, there are times this. when you're in entertainment, in our case, radio... When another radio show just does something really huge, and you just got to sit back and go, oof, that, that hurts a little. That that hurts a little. Yeah. And, yeah. Then you, and then you try to spin it and say how it's an awful move. You never <laughs> like seeing good things happen to other people. <laughs> but to try to spin this, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of ridiculous. So this is uh, some audio from Howie. I was reading this thing about Joel Hollander, your friend Joel Hollander, yesterday. And CBS, what they're doing with Opie and Anthony. What do you think about this whole shit? Yeah, did you hear about this? No, what's going on with Opie and Anthony? Uh, Robin, you fucking no, lying no. piece of shit. Everyone in the business that's knew why what was we're going gonna, on. That's why we're going to get you guys in the end. We, At least be honest. We still try to be honest for the most part on this program. For her to sit there like, no, no, what's going on? What's going on? You're like every other radio guy in America, or, or chick, whatever, and, and you read the fucking headlines. You go to the New York Radio Message Board, you go to InsideRadio.com, you go to FMQB.com, you go to RROnline.com, all hear, access. You hear it from the people you work with. Right. They're industry insiders. Do you read the newspaper before you go on the air? Of course you do. We're, we were on page nine. So for her to say, no, no, what, tell me. Because you're trying to make believe it doesn't, uh, no. it, it doesn't interest you, or no. or you can't be bothered by it. Yeah. They're doing with Opie and Anthony. What do you think about this whole shit? Hey, did you hear about this? No. What's going on with Opie and Anthony? Uh, David oh, Lee no. Roth is fired, <gasps> and they're taking a, uh, I guess, the Opie and Anthony XM feed, the satellite feed, and like editing it. Or and they're going to play it on their. Air? They're going to play it in three markets: New York, Philly, and another test. Oh, no, I don't two. think it's a test. I think I think it's uh, Joel's latest attempt to sort of revive the radio division. They need money, man. They need money bad, and that's mm -hmm. how they're going to make it. Yeah, I don't they know. Think. Well, the reason I say it's a test, he's trying it out in three markets first. Right, right, right. If it's successful, ah. they'll expand. What are the three markets? Well, people, well like, a couple of people around here asked me what I thought, and I go, I told you, I don't care who I replaces don't care. me. I, said, I don't care. I just don't care. See, we, I don't care. We taught all the listeners this a long time ago. When you say you don't care, y you care. You care. I don't care equals hey. I care. And that means us, too. There are times we go, I don't care I about don't that. care about no, that. We care. I care. <laughs> when you say I don't care, you care. I don't care. You care a lot. I don't care. <laughs> <sighs>
I thought, and I go, I told you, I don't care who replaces me. I said, you know, in a way, I read uh, one article that said it's sweet revenge because they can go head to head with Howard Stern. I was, <laughs> no, we're going head to head with Howard Stern right now. Yeah. We have a bigger audience on XM than he has at the Little Doggy Company. That right. is a fact. And now, it may get much, much bigger. Yeah. With the potential to actually get to talk to his listeners every day, and he can't talk to ours. 90% didn't follow him, so they're looking for something to listen to. Stern, I was, <laughs> no, they um, can't. No, they can't. I'm not on terrestrial radio anymore, but... You know, do your thing. I don't know. It's they weird. It's weird. Try to do anything to paint you Completely as the stupid. loser in this thing. Yeah, everyone's trying to. You know, I think satellite radios. I think it's a weird move in that XM is admitting defeat in a sense uh, that uh, they couldn't. Get oh, all right. Okay. Now yeah, see, that's it. There's Make the spin. Make it all about you. Let's see how XM is admitting defeat. Make it all about you by syndicating a show. This. The subscribers are still and the subscriber base is still two to one in XM's favor. How big this is? Let me explain how this how this progressed. Satellite radio, early days, was the graveyard of radio personalities. Let's be honest. You didn't do satellite radio unless you were doing so poorly in regular radio that no one wanted you. So you came to satellite. Then they started getting some some uh, listeners. And uh, along with people that weren't good enough for regular radio, there were people that fucked up so badly in regular radio, they had to go to satellite. This included uh, people, um, yeah, I think uh, there was somebody up in Boston ended up there, and, uh, well, eventually us. Uh, the audience grew and grew and grew, though. And it is now turned into, this is, I don't want to sound like Howard, but it it is groundbreaking. This is now... Broadcast radio had to look to the satellite talent pool to find a program. Right. That's huge and for for satellite and because it, it happened here for XM. It's it's not uh, uh, conceding or, or, or being defeated. It's it's broadcast radio going. We need talent. We need a talent that we know is going to be able to bring in numbers. And uh, uh, in, in huge markets, where are we going to get it? Let's look all over the country and try to find it. Hmm. We can't. Where do we go? Satellite. Now they're looking to satellite to find the uh, talent. So don't don't even uh, don't even try to spin this as a defeat, you idiot. And uh, we do real math here. Howie does his Howie math. When Ant and I arrived at XM a mere 18 months ago, uh, XM had about... Two to anywhere from two to two point two million subscribers. I don't remember the exact number. Yep. Okay, uh, as we speak today, April twenty first, mm -hmm. 06, it's uh, well over six on its way to seven million. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to admit defeat. Why? Yeah. Wh how is this? We still have twice as many uh, subscribers as the, as your company. As how he puts it, we're constantly. And I'm, by we, I mean us, XM. We're constantly failing <laughs> and um, being defeated. Meanwhile, you know, a huge portion a portion of his listen, listenership didn't follow him. And there's really no buzz. There was the initial buzz of him going over there. But now, you know, he's doing his show over there. He's got his fans, you know, a few of them, the, the hardcore ones that went there. But 90% of his fans from uh, Terrestrial, are waiting for something. Hi. And we hope to pick up a lot of those. How you doing? Hey, uh, let's say hi to Tom on Long Island. Tom, what's up? Hi, guys. Uh, Robin claimed she didn't know what the story was, but then she knew it was only three markets that you were going to. Yeah, all of a sudden she's talking about uh, no, see, details. They, their whole job is to And try. they're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. And their whole job is to downplay it as much as possible. So... So let's say if it was uh, really seven or eight, I don't know. Uh, you say it's three because it looks, it doesn't look as good. That's their whole job. Right, but yeah, but she didn't the, know. What our, their whole was. job is to spin and make us look like assholes and make them look like, uh, you know, they're the only thing that you should listen to on radio. <clears throat> That's been his job for years. It's not working anymore. Weird move in that XM is admitting defeat in a sense that uh, they couldn't get anything going with those guys. <laughs> well, you got so. people paying like. Wait a minute. Good we'll humor Howard and we'll follow the logic All right, of that. Please.
So Please. we're such an awful radio show, and we're failures at XM. Yeah. That instead of firing us, which they can, and and it would be a mere bag of shells to pay us off. Uh huh. Not they're not going to fire us. They're going to now. Yeah, we're not making half a billion dollars. They're not going to expose us to a much, much, much larger audience. Right. Yeah. I haven't done the math yet, but it's safe to say a much, much, much larger audience. How the fuck does that make sense, Howard? And and is it, it with his logic, we would have to be, Opie, the worst show on the platform. L hear me out. We would have to be the worst show on the XM platform because then they would have come to maybe get uh, Bob Edwards or someone else, anyone else but us. Right. But uh, they came for us because we got we got to get them out of here. You know what bothers me the most about this? Do, do his listeners really buy into this shit? I think the subscribers, a few of them anyway, probably do. But you think do. they roll They're their the eyes like, oh, I, I love zombies. listening to the guy still, and, you know, he makes me laugh or what have you, or he makes me jerk off in the car. Yeah. But, oh, my God, is that's that's like, wow. Yeah, he, I've heard from a few people that have been like, you know, oh, the guy, you know, I, I like listening to him. He's entertaining. But sometimes when he just starts going into certain things, you got to say he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just delusional. I guess it used to work. Yeah, back there, in you know the, the a, late there was a 80s, time early it used to 90s. Work when he really gave a shit instead of making believe he gives a shit. Late 80s, early 90s, he could make anything happen. The guy, he he really did drive an army. Um, it's just not that way anymore. I like radios. I think it's a weird move in that XM is admitting defeat in a sense that uh, they couldn't get anything going with those guys. Well, you've so. got people paying like so much money for this crap, especially, well, not serious, but XM, and then people are going to pay for it. Now they're going to get it for free on terrestrial testicle radio. That's bullshit. No, I think XM's giving up. I think they probably made a deal because those guys had a couple of years on their contract. They probably made a deal that they could mention XM. So yeah. the very thing they're suing me for, uh, they're allowing uh, these guys to do. Uh -huh. But uh, how does that you know, make you feel? I don't feel? know. I don't know. And, and, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's just uh, too uh, much. Uh, 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 what? Uh, what'd you say at the end there? I don't know. Something irrelevant and stupid. Oh, that's too much. Get back in your dunking. Would booth. you step on a scale? <laughs> oh, that's too much. <laughs> Way to keep the weight off, fatty. Oh. Be able to accomplish that, some self-esteem for what, maybe a year? Way to go. Yeah. Gary was all upset about it, and I said, you know, the, the thing that's weird about it is that it shows you again what a liar Joe Hollander and Leslie Moonves and all these guys are. Yeah. By the way, because I, I really know psychology. Mm -hmm. I really do. I know how people, uh, you know, act and stuff. Mm -hmm. He is beyond fucking pissed. Yeah. And like we said yesterday, he, he probably went to his therapist and because uh, he's now in therapy, deep, deep therapy. like Five days a week. Five days a week. Yeah. Uh, and the therapist, I would never listen to a fucking therapist. I know me. I don't need to pay someone to go, I think I know you better than yourself. No, I know what my faults are. And sometimes I work on them and sometimes I don't. <laughs> All right? So the therapist has probably told Howie, look... I know you're beyond pissed off and you want to yell and scream, but why don't you take the opposite approach? Mm -hmm. Why don't you bring it down a notch? Bring it down. Bring it calm. down and, and just just stay calm. And it's all agenda driven. Do you hear how he's covering subjects? He's he's trying to make a story. He's trying to mold this like and spin it. So he's got to address everything like he's just doing a stream of consciousness. Right. But he's addressing us. He's addressing uh, Joel and Les. He's he, there are subject matters he wants to address and give a spin on. And XM and this, uh, how it's, you know, uh, defeat. You know, these are all things that he pre-thought out and wants addressed in his own spin. He's he's addressing the converted here. They, they, you're, Howie, Howard's only talking to his hardest core fans. Who is he telling this to? The news isn't going to pick it up. They're not going. They're not going to care. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 
But you keep talking very calmly, because that'll yeah. help, because your therapist told you that this is the way to handle it. Oh, this. that's too much. <laughs> Howie's paycheck? <laughs> what was she talking about? I have no idea. So back to the audio. Thing that's weird about it is that it shows you again what a liar Joe Hollander and Leslie Moonves and all these guys are, that uh, they fired these guys, and they said when I was leaving that, um, you know, they were taking a new direction, the new high road. Yeah, well, the re direction they took, they don't like anymore. Right. The direction they took lasted three months. <laughs> wow, Hole, you added a lot there. Wow. wow. And, uh, boy, when something isn't working, you should leave it there. You know, like I said before, I, I don't know David Lee Roth. I got nothing personal against the guy. But for the love of God, for the love of God, stop the hemorrhaging. <laughs> when you see something bleeding, uh, a tourniquet, at least. Right. The direction they took lasted three months. What was that ad that they took out in one of the trade magazines? No more fart jokes. Yeah, no more. Yeah, and the, that's yeah. old. Yeah. Right, right. And, and you Joel, were real upset about Opie and Anthony. Why do you care? Because you know what? Because they were always talking about how they're better than you, and they're not. It's like you well, know, every one of these guys no, but, does. But it pisses me off because they're going to go to Love terrestrial percent. radio, and they might have a small amount of success. Well, they might have a large amount. And they, of success. And what else gonna, is on? And they're going to they're going to say that they kicked your ass. But they, oh, is Howard admitting that Thank we you, get something Howie. done? Are you finally admitting it, Howard? You fucking asshole! <laughs> By the way, we're collecting lots and lots of stories. Stories we have never heard before. Oh my God, it's going to get fun. Go yeah. fuck yourself. All amount of success. Well, they might have a large amount and they, of success. And then what else is on it? And they're going to say that they kicked your ass, but they really oh. didn't. And I always say... But why do we care if someone says, I, I kicked... No, we didn't kick your ass. We never had the opportunity to kick no. your ass. That is a fact, okay? We were on afternoon. Howard had a great run on regular radio. And uh, honestly, the era is just about over. That's what this is all about. It's not about we go there and, uh, you know, kick his ass. It's not even a fair game at this point. Yeah. It, when we first came to New York, and we said it before, it would have been an honor and a pleasure to do afternoons over at uh, K-Rock in New York. Him do mornings, us do afternoon drive. Would have been great. The ratings would have been through the roof. There were concerns with management about sales issues, whatever. Whatever happened, happened. We didn't end up over there. Uh, but at that time, would have been perfect. We weren't looking to come into New York and beat Howard Stern at anything. We were doing afternoons. We were clawing, just trying to get a, a, a foot, a foothold at WNEW, which was tanked at that point. We didn't come in here trying to. They make it sound like we came in trying to beat up on Howie and beat him. We were in the same company. And we, we were working for the same company. And we were doing. We were just doing. Trying to survive. What we were doing at the time was a radio we thought was interesting, hopefully clever, edgy, funny. And yeah. and just being goofballs. So we made fun of him. We made fun of Imus. We made fun of uh, Scott and Todd and and that other guy, uh, uh, Rocky Allen. Yeah, that's what we do. We make fun of all the other guys in the business. And he was the only one that couldn't take it. Yeah, took it very seriously. Took it very seriously. All the other guys were like, uh, that's just Opie and Anthony being Opie and Anthony. And, you know, it's kind of funny. So I guess I could laugh at a joke. So I laugh at it. He mm -hmm. was the only fucking one. We didn't go after him. We were just doing no. our, our show. He perceived it as some kind of fucked up threat and went behind the scenes and made our life a living hell. He did that. We were just doing a fun show. Right. And they, and then what they're, else is on and it? And they're going to they're gonna say that they kicked your ass, but they really oh. didn't. And I always say... But why do we care if someone says, I, I kicked my ass? Because it bothers me. It does. It's really? All, it's like I said, oh, remember God. when the Knicks this went it, to, the, uh, to the... You know... This, this bothers me. You know me. what this reminds me of? Watch Downfall. <laughs> This is Hitler in the bunker with one of his soldiers just not seeing the end. Sitting there with Hitler in the bunker watching, like, the big, um, uh, all the models of Berlin uh, on, on the middle of the table. And, and Hitler's talking about how it's going to be great and how this army's going to do this. And there are people, yes, mein Führer, yeah, still believing mm -hmm. and not wanting to see that it's just over. It's over, Johnny. That's Gary. Gary's the good soldier. That was never paid right. Uh, yeah. Well, God, we're getting some great stories. Yeah. Oh, we're getting, yeah. you know, we got to get to know each other a little bit more. But the, the little, Yeah, we get to know each other. The little stuff that's uh, trickling in already is just fantastic. Fantastic. But he's a, he's a good soldier, and uh, that's what he's doing here. He's just being a good soldier. He is taking the anger portion so Howard can take that 
relax therapist kind of yeah. I don't care stance. Yeah. So Gary's a good soldier being the angry guy. Absolutely. And the whole Wow. Why is she there? Even the hardcore, you know, Stern fans know she's useless. You got to they, they, know. They're not going to ever argue that point. You know ever. she was a great ticket early in the career so he could do women and black humor. Yeah. Uh, after that, I mean, come on, stop. Anyway, so... Just uh, as worth... Uh, I mean, she's she's Earl with tits. <laughs> <laughs> Really? It's like I said. Remember when the Knicks went to the uh, to the uh, to the finals one year? They could never beat the Bulls, and they finally beat the Bulls when Michael Jordan wasn't there. It's right. like a hollow victory. So they're they're big in morning radio, but they didn't beat you. They didn't beat the best. Well, Michael first Jordan all, doing radio. Gotta, first of all, it's not going to be an easy road for them or anyone who right. works for CBS with the FCC and everything else. You got to water down your own show. I'm not sure why somebody would want that unless yeah. you you kind of just need the money. Oh, I can't wait to openly talk on Monday. Kind of just need the money. I everyone does. You've taken it all from everyone on the planet right look everyone needs some money look around your uh your office space there and see how many homeless people are now working for you because because they can't pay them anything yeah look, look at their clothes they're not as sharp as they were uh, a few months back no their lifestyle has drastically dropped because everything else is being cut out of the budget mm -hmm. everything else is being cut out of the budget That's i can't wait to does. I can't wait to talk openly. I mean, the one thing we obviously can say, because we've said it many, many times, you know, Howard bitches and complains that he's been doing subpar radio for the last 10 years. In those same 10 years, Anthony and I made a name for ourselves. Yeah. You know, we're not a one-trick pony. I, I mean, there'll be more said on Monday. All questions will Two be answered. tricks. <laughs> but, the, I mean, the, uh, we'll get into it on Monday, trust me. You know? Yeah. Radio's not all about, you know, fart jokes and take off your top honey. No. It's not a, it's not about and you know, someone out every there, day having strippers in. And, someone and, out there had no idea how to uh, really adjust. Let freedom ring and let it be rung by a stripper. Ugh. We, we get it. You know, is it really that entertaining every day to have strippers in? And, and porn stars to do things, I mean, every fucking day, so you can justify people paying for a TV pay-per-view service that is nothing better than maybe softcore porn? I mean, really, think about it. If you got to do that to your listeners every day just so you can justify a, a, a pay-per-view service, are you really giving them entertaining radio, or are you compromising there? Give me a break. All right, the audio continues here. I was surprised. Like, I heard that there are other shows. There's one show in particular that we were talking about the other day. Right. That's in a, a, a like, a smaller market and not on a morning drive that's getting edited like crazy. And yeah. I was surprised they were still paying that much attention. I thought after you left, they'd sort of just... No, the FCC's... Oh, no, they revving up. Re so, the FCC's revving up. But what's weird about it is, the weird thing about it is, is that the reason these guys were fired is because they did a promotion where people went into a church. Here he goes. By the way, listen. Part of the agenda this. again. Part of the agenda again. He's got all this in his head. These are the things he wanted to get out. Trying to make it sound spontaneous. The guy's track record speaks for itself, but now he's going to tell us what we did. Hey, we're the bad boys. What we did was bad. We're bad boys. I don't even have to list the shit he's done over the years. But he's now going to tell us what we did was bad. Yeah. And the listeners buy into this, right? Yeah. We know what we did. They're not sitting there yelling at their radios going, but Howard, what about all the stuff you did? A promotion where people went into a church and had sex. They desecrated a church. And um, what is odd about that is, is that, again, I told you, to Catholics, to people who practice the, you know, Christianity, this is blasphemous. This is unforgivable. This is uh, something right that, there. you know. Look, I know the guy's Jewish. Perhaps he's not too up to date on Catholicism, but everything is forgivable. <laughs> it's the Catholic Church. It's based on forgiveness. As long as you, you repent, you confess, you're forgiven. You're absolved. It's the whole basis for Christ dying on the cross. It, it, it's It's... You get absolution, forgiveness. It's not something called 
unforgivable. He's a year away from Scientology or oh, the, oh please or the uh, the yarn religion, the yarn <laughs> around the wrist religion. Whatever that's the called. The yarn religion. Uh, the Catholic League news release from yesterday. In short, the Catholic League hopes Opie and Anthony have a great run on CBS radio. Mm -hmm. Sounds like some people have for forgiven. Because there's forgiveness. That's what the religion is based on. Practice the, you know, Christianity. This is blasphemous. This is unforgivable. This is something that, you know, th despite the popularity that they had, they had to fire these guys because... It's blaspheme. You you can't do it. I'm talking about like everyone from Bill O'Reilly to John Gibson who are screaming that Easter and Christmas has been taken away. The majority in this pe the people in this country consider this a, a desecration of a church. Now you've got Sumner Murray Rothstein, a Jew, Joel Hollander, a Jew, Steve Lehrman, a Jew who masterminded this Opie and Anthony thing. He tried it out with Fareed, if you remember. You've got, uh, I think Leslie Moonves is a Jew. Listen to Adolf um, Stern. You've got four Jews ignoring... Oh, shit, beats my full house. ...the blasphemous act of sex in a church. <laughs> and uh, you don't think these religious people Damn, are going to not Muslims. go berserk? I'm all in with four I mean, Jews. There is no way... That, that, uh, I oh mean, my they, God, he's it's going all staggering in. because the company had a got say. A full house, three we'll never hire Baptists. these guys Damn again. It. What they did was wrong. We don't agree with it. And Phil Gordon doesn't know he's got four Jews. we at the company when, when that when happened. happened. Yeah. Les and, and Sumner Redstone were part of the company. Sumner Murray Rothstein, who is uh, Sumner Redstone's real name, he doesn't want you to know he's Jewish. Oh. You see, when you're really? a Jew who is uh, given everything in life, now, I grew up in a black community. I also grew up uh, for three years, uh, part of my my years, uh, in the heart of the Archdiocese, Rockville Center, New York, which is a hotbed of anti-Semitism. I mean, I think they're still pre to preaching that the Jews killed Jesus, you know. Uh, they haven't changed. And the fact of the matter, I mean, they still have a golf course there that barely lets any Jews in. I think they got one or two. Bushwood, sir. So the fact of the matter is that I think that these guys <laughs> underestimate what that means especially Jews allowing this to pass. Sorry, we're boring you with this audio, by the way. Gee. Way to make uh, things enter entertaining, Howard. Oh, my God. Not a laugh to be had. Howie. Not a laugh to be Howie, had. Howie Hitler. Speaking of... <laughs> my uh, goodness uh, gracious. Uh, the... Uh, uh, I, uh, let me tell you about uh, the insidious Jew, Robin. The uh, Jew is using the black man uh, as a tool. Against uh, white America. Ooh. <laughs> um, no, the new one is, the new voice is this. Yeah, the casual. These Howard. guys. Uh, let me tell you what these guys. Is he crazy? These guys. Uh, is he trying? Hey, you're hearing the stories. That is, <laughs> let, let me, you know, yeah, I know. Let me explain what that was for those of you. <laughs> I'm sure everybody that picked up on it. That are still listening to this crap. I'm sure everyone picked up on it. It, th that's his agenda again. He's trying to pit the Catholics against the Jews. So he thinks by pointing out what happened uh, when we got fired four years ago at St. Pat's, by pointing that out and then pointing out that we're being hired by Jews, that it's going to rally the Catholics oh, yeah, against us and the Jews He's still trying to ruin our careers. He, right. This is a nothing. This is a him. tactic, which uh, is it's Howard. It's not just gonna stop. Work. Let us do our thing. You do your thing. Stop trying to ruin our careers. And this from a guy who tries to claim he was half Italian for his entire career. He's half Jewish, half Italian. Stop it. Just stop. We do our thing. You do your thing. Okay. Embrace your Judaism. Just stop trying now to ruin us. You've done it long enough. It shows how insecure you really are. From XM, from XM standpoint, I don't understand it. They don't have exclusive programming anymore. They don't have exclusive content. Um, I think and they, if you can get Opie and Anthony uh, for free, why bother with XM? No, no, I I love love it. Giant commercial Where did well, she go? That's what they're hoping. What? Has she had that affectation the whole time? Where have they been? Let me, speaking of XM, <laughs> it was rated X in my bedroom last night. Speaking of nothing to say. Speaking of a black hole. <laughs> fucking. Oh, does she have nothing to contribute? She is. Oh, 
She is so dumb. She's Captain Obvious. Oof, stop it, Obi. You make that up. Captain Obvious. She is Captain Obvious. She always take the she takes the Captain Obvious approach on every single thing. Oh, why don't you try to use that dumb brain of yours? Robin Goebbels. <laughs> Howard Hitler. Obviously, if they could get the Opie and Anthony program for free, why would they subscribe to XM? I don't understand why they even brought him over. Well, maybe, Black Hole. <gasps> That's not what's going to happen. Let me push my tits against this glass window, man. And you could titty fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they're wild, those gals. Ugh. Ugh. Um, I think and if you can get Opie and Anthony for free, why bother with XM? Maybe they well, feel I it's going to be a giant commercial for well, XM. Well, that's what they're hoping for. Right. So if that's a problem, why is it that uh, Infinity's suing me? Or CBS, rather. And I suppose with all the bleeps, they're figuring <laughs> people will want to hear Opie and Anthony without the bleeps, and they'll pay for that? I don't know. No one's going to pay for shit. I just tell you that. Yeah. only thing I wanted to yeah, ask no, is... So I don't know. I mean, yeah, do, I, do, I, do I feel competitive in that, oh, my God, they're taking over my slot? No. I held that morning slot and created syndication and a bunch of other things for 25 years a lot for of great CBS. Stuff for radio. Well, 25 Absolutely. years, 20 for Never CBS. Never deny it. Um, and uh, I'm done with that now. I'm on to a new phase of my career. Too, I'm into promoting ass. satellite. I have never been happier professionally. And it's kicking ass too, man. So. Would you, know, you I mean, take it, a deal where they said, "All right, uh, no, Howard, we absolutely want to put not. you on uh, for uh, one billion dollars." Well, that's dollars. my point. I, every one of these jackass wannabes, Wanna they be. would never have pioneered a goddamn thing. Hey, but they easy, all want settle down, settle down. She says they would have pioneered pion a goddamn thing. When we came to XM, we were called the pioneers of satellite radio, you And we black dressed mess. the part. We came riding up on a Conestoga wagon. <laughs> we panned for gold out on 57th. It was wonderful. We keep to the facts. They wrote about it as we're pioneering satellite radio. We did it before Howard did. But we waited, remember, until he got on so we could know what to do. Yeah, so we had as his per whole... As, as per the black hole, she said, yeah. We actually sat here just kind of looking at each other, whistling like, well, any, what do you want to do, Opie? Well, any day now, he'll be uh, on satellite, and then we'll know what to do. What's the what's the date? Oh, we only got a, a year to sit here and do nothing. All right, a year of just sitting here looking at each other. Okay. Uh, I wish he was coming sooner than a year. <laughs> right. How can we fake doing a show for a year? I don't know, Anthony, but we'll try. Oh, we'll try. Boy. What time is it? Oh, okay. Oh, I wish, I wish you would get here sooner. Oh, hurry, hurry, Howie. We don't know what to do. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's delusion. Pure delusional madness over there. And speaking of pioneers... Uh, I had come in here last night. It looks like uh, Opie and Anthony will be pioneers once again. Oh, I don't understand what they did before you got it. it sounds like they're going to do something that has never been done before. Right. You ass. We went from regular radio to satellite. Back to regular. And now the whole thing, we're going to put back on satellite so it can be sold to regular radio. Let's do it 18 times and see what it sounds like at the end. <laughs> Just static. I said, all right, uh, no, Howard, we want to put not. you on. No. Well, that's my point. I, every one of these jackass wannabes, <laughs> they would never have pioneered a goddamn <laughs> thing. Ooh. But they all want to say they're you. And by, by the way, I'm but, Howard. But, 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 but who is it a victory for? Howard. I mean, XM loses. Joel Hollander will be out of a job soon. I mean, it's... Yeah, uh, he must be running around like... He's desperate. Answer. Every article saying how this is a win for everybody, yeah, by the way. There hasn't been one... In, Every in industry article, one industry insider or one industry paper, the trade magazines that have said that this was a bad move for anyone involved. You yeah. know, if it happens, <laughs> Howie. I mean, you know, I'm sure if, if it ever came to pass, Howie. I'm sure your therapist would just would would agree with us. Just admit it's a good move. Come on. Just admit it. You know it's a good move. You know it's a great move. Howard, why can't you just admit that this is a good move? Why do you sit in your studio saying that this isn't a, a good move for them? You're just building up anger inside of you. Uh, Dr. Melfi, I don't care. I don't care. 
Um, um. <laughs> That's it. Use your relaxation <laughs> techniques, Howard. But you have to admit it is a good move. No, it's not, and I don't care. <laughs> oh, we, our time is up. I have an appointment with a Mr. Delabate is coming in next. <laughs> He's more angry than you. Uh, and then I have to speak to something called the hole. She's coming in. <laughs> Uh, stop it. Does Joel Hollander will be out of a job soon? I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, he must be running around like he's a desperate. on time. First of all, what does it say to the people in the company? Do you know, you got like don't know what we're doing. You got uh, Don and Mike. You got uh, Kid Chris now. You got all these guys. Radio working, Chick. Radio Chick. You got all these guys, these people working for the company. Everyone that None you've None of passed, them Howard. could have gone into the morning. Booker couldn't have gone in the morning and done his impression no, of me. Nobody who's currently doing radio apparently can do radio. Right. It's oh, such a horseshit. <laughs> now, here's the other thing. Here, here's the other oh. thing you got to mix into the equation, because I'm a pretty good student of radio. Ah, are you? Why I'm a is it student that these other companies aren't putting on better morning radio shows on terrestrial radio like why doesn't um um like like kevin and bean are on in la um why adam carolla is doing terrible in la against they them they get uh, rick d's out of retirement well that rick d's wouldn't you know in this <laughs> genre of radio the howard stern imitation radio <laughs> oh, like why not just oh. get a bunch of howard stern imitators on on another channel and just and just crush who you know you could easily crush opie and anthony because they have to do a watered down show now so why would but, you? But why wouldn't you, you do that? But, I, but you said you were a student of radio. But but, but, but it, wouldn't anybody going but, against us have to do with this watered down, down radio show? show? Haven't we proven that we can do FCC friendly radio and get ratings? Uh, we, we. By the way, uh, for a lot of the people that are just scared shitless out of there, yeah. Today's show, yesterday's show, without the fucks, could be on regular radio. Yeah, don't worry Entirely. about it. Entirely. Relax, okay? Entirely. You fucking asshole. This is a lot more to this, and we'll answer all questions on Monday. And if it was... Um, but he's a student of radio, so... He'll be saying fuck. So to... Cr yeah. Well, in another hour. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, We've been saying fuck for an hour. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we have been saying fuck for... You're right, we Anthony. I'm worry. sorry. <laughs> you're right. We have been saying fuck for an hour. Okay. And I'm we, just stating what we've been doing. And, you know, if you f we feel like it, we could say fuck for another two hours. If we wanted to. Yeah, if we wanted to. If the listeners were nice to us. <laughs> you better be nice to us. I'll send you to the cornfield. <laughs> Little bastards. Howard actually said he's a student of radio and then had uh, Why the wouldn't he worst, say he's the teacher of radio? The worst. The worst uh, explanation there. That, that meant he says, nothing. He, he wants everyone to kick our ass because he just hates us. For what reason, to this day, we really don't know. It all started with us goofing on him, and it escalated from there, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We gave him his props. We did all that bullshit. Blah, 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 because that's what you have to do. You have to lick Howard's ass. So he said the way to Ew. defeat Opie and Anthony is to put Howard Stern imitators up against us because we'll be doing a watered-down show, and then they will beat us, and then but they're doing a watered-down show watered as down. well. But then... Right? Yeah, it made no sense. Is it was what you're trying to say? It made no sense. Yeah, I, I'll tell you. I had I told you I had a friend that called me that had been offered to do work on the David Lee Roth show. He worked at you know, and he said, uh, you know, do you think I should do it? I said, aside from everything else, I said I don't think it's going to last that long. And he's like, no, 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 no. I sat down with him, and they guaranteeing three years. They're sticking with it. Yeah, yeah right. Oh. Well, Joel panicked. I mean, he's the he's the laughing stock of the radio industry. Uh, doesn't know what to do. And now he's like, oh, my God, please. He, it's almost like uh, Opie and Anthony made them their bitches. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, they, they, they somehow regained control. Back. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, hey, I wish him luck. All right. Thank you, Howard Stern, for that wish of luck. Thank you, Howie. Either way, we know we're going to have just a good old time. And that's what we do. We have mm -hmm. fun on the radio still. There's a, there's a lot more, but, I mean, you get the point. There's another four or five tracks, but... Quite honestly, he's boring me to death with his delivery. Oh, I know. Stop. Isn't there a great Van Halen song that Sammy Hagar sings? It's called The Best of Both Worlds. I remember that. Yeah, it's a good song. Hi, Patrice.
How's the oxy? Patrice O'Neill. Patrice is in oh, studio. I slept on the floor, nigga. You I went. I was, you I, crashed I was, out. I was, I was for trying a while. to stay out. That's right. Like, we were you taking slept. a. We it's were not that did the show, but it's just it's a weird day. You know. It's a weird day for you to be here. We're not doing a, like a regular show. It's just there's just you know. It's just, How come Ben didn't know to just call? Shit, I was thinking about calling in sick. Calling in sick <laughs> to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you're part of this project, you know. Yeah, so. You're part of this project. I don't even know what fucking project you're talking about, <laughs> you sneaky motherfuckers. I don't, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Every day, Obi goes, hey, man, let me tell you something, man. Elo, A, the mm, uh, likes you. There's a project. He likes you. All right, Elo. All Elo. Right, oh, Elo, right. Elo, call right now and tell Patrice yourself. Uh, he might be in some high power meetings, to be honest with you. Right, Patrice. Master, <laughs> master like you. And someday you're going to be in the house. <laughs> I'm going to call you're you part get up this. to the house. I'm part of what? I'm, I don't even know what's going on. I'm, I'm calling you out on this, though, because, you know, you give, you give this aura of I don't give a shit, right? As we went to break, I told you, like, eh, this thing's happening. It's pretty good, you know? It's looking, yeah. look it up, and you go, well, uh, should I call him, or, or should I go for Shut you? the fuck up, first of all, <laughs> Captain Honesty, since everybody's a captain. Captain. <laughs> I only said that's the first time I said, Opie has been saying since, uh, prehistoric times. No. Listen, man, Elo loves you. General and exaggeration. No, no, no. Elo. A couple of skiddly dudes. Yeah. And then, I said today, what, what should I, is he gonna call me? Or is, or yeah, we're, am I gonna do it through how's you? How that work? I don't know what the. F I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how. It don't works. let that shake you, Patrice, because I don't talk to any of those yeah, people. I don't know how Elo, it works. Unless something's going on, Patrice. Elo is gonna talk to you in the near future. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm not. Don't try to make me out to what? be Mr. Fat Excited. I'm just future. like, what's going on? There's no real date. In the near, in the coming like, future, you will get a phone call. But just like this thing today, it's like people. Listening, gotta understand. Nobody like I don't even know if fan anybody knows. I'm sitting right. there going, I have no no clue. Like I don't even know what question to ask. I'll give it as a question. Go. Like I want to ask all type of shit. I want to ask. Okay, let me let me do the the fake ask, but I'm not asking. Uh -huh. Did before mm -hmm. Mr. Lee Roth was removed, mm -hmm. was this supposed it, was this it, supposed it move? A supposed move before David Lee Roth even existed? Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. There is no answer to that. That could ever possibly be given, and none should ever, ever be given. <laughs> he just gave me those fucking eyes. With his, with his, those eyes. With, with, look, <laughs> don't. Uh, those beautiful eyes turn into shark's eyes, oh, just now oh, black and it, evil. It, Tur you turn, look like, turn the mics off. Hold on, but you just look like uh, that animal that gets uh, that gets grabbed by the skunk. Yeah, and yeah. hugs by the skunk. Yeah. What is it, Peppy? Uh, what's that old cartoon, yo? Pepe oh, Peppy Le, Pepe Le, Pepe Le Pew. Pew. Yeah, you yeah. have those eyes. Like, what the fuck is he saying? What's Are going on? Are you insane? I have... right, should I turn off the mics? Uh, just so I can tell Patrice something real quick. But can we get some hold music or something going on? You yeah, have we, the we got some elevator music. Uh, D D Derek's got it. <laughs> yeah, but we don't know where. <laughs> Where is it? Here you go. Oh, yeah, it's right in oh, front okay. of me. And here's how fucked up life is. Hey, 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 we're turning off the hold mic. On, Wait, before on. you turn off the mic, oh. let me just say yeah, yeah. that here's, here's how unfriendly motherfuckers are. Motherfuckers will not wait to the end to go, hey, but nope. the show is over. Niggas nope. are on their own. <laughs> motherfuckers spread out nope. like roaches <laughs> at the end of the show. Hey, uh oh, uh, uh, what the Pac Man music comes on. And it's like, and it's like, thank you, we're out. Hey, listen, go fuck yourself. So you rather during the show turn off the mics. Exactly. Tell me some shit that a fucking pseudo friend could say to a nigga after the fucking uh -uh. show. Yeah, we'll be out here at 11 01. No phone call, no nothing. There's 20 more hours in the fucking day that you would rather. <laughs> the only interaction we have is during the radio. That's it. All right. Stop. I wish I could call you from hey. my house to tell you about my oxy shit, but nobody <laughs> gives a fuck. You motherfuckers are awful. The hey, beast hey, is listen. awake. Hey, hey wait. Wait. I, turn the mic. The beast has awoken. That's what I was just thinking. Because I'm sitting there going, had it. When, like the, Mount Vesuvius. when the stern thing goes down, it's like it's nothing. Because it's such a background with you motherfuckers. Y'all yeah. hate each other. So I go, okay. And it's just, you know, I'll get up. If somebody goes, and that fat fucking asshole, they got it. As soon as I'm, I'm waiting to hear that so I can have an excuse to say something. Uh -huh. So I'm like, all right, we're like, but it's, it's, I know nothing. Right. Nothing. And by knowing nothing, you, you have Patrice. music. <laughs> music. I, I, I want to comment about what he just said. We, we went out to dinner once. 
I gave you a little time outside this fake oh, fake friendship four hour thing. This like, hey, listen, stop the radio show so we could be friends for five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I call the motherfucker at twelve. Anthony be like, huh, nigga, what? Hey, what? Anthony, hey man, that oxy powder. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> you just make sure you're. In that studio tomorrow morning at 7. <laughs> Get in at 6 30 and shut the fuck up. Uh, uh, what? Why are you calling me? Hey, man, I was fucked up about Mandy's, huh? Nigga! What? What? <laughs> What time is it? What are you calling me for? <laughs> hey, Ben. How'd yeah, you, Patrice. <laughs> how'd you get this number? <laughs> hey, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, what's going on? Uh, I don't know. You, I, can, you should get us back and invite us on. Uh, me. Not invite us on the actual show, but invite us to the taping of Web Junk 20 just so you can say, hey, man, I'm too busy to talk right now. I got, just, just I got writer's on. meetings. Yeah. And... Let, me can, let me cancel. <laughs> listen. Listen, everybody. Shut down, the, shut down the whole thing so I can talk to my friends. <laughs> We're not friends unless something's going on. <laughs> That's what back, back in Tough Crowd is the only time you talk. <laughs> hey, man. How you guys doing? Tough crowd's going on. Outside the thing, you get out, you just, uh... Nothing. Yeah, I remember one day I saw you on West 4th with fucking Big Kev and your girl, mm -hmm. and we tried to talk. <laughs> and it was the most awkward thing, right? It was like, hey, man, how you doing? Hey. It's like, go... It, cause I, you had just, I think he was ill at that, at that time. You, you had just had recovered... Cold. A cold, as they say. You had a bad had a, you had, had a, a cold recovery from a bad cold. A stent in for. And I'm like, what's happening, man? Like, I didn't realize that was like something you never talked about. Like, I had to, like, one day come on, and I'm like, hey, man, I heard about the such and such. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? Do, I've commiserated people, do with people Fezzi. know I've been to jail and almost got raped at a rest stop and we don't know <laughs> that you had a fucking coronary motherfucker? Was, Why not? That's some blockage. <laughs> What a sneaky bastards! Who has Both it? you niggas are sneaky in love. Both you niggas are sneaky ill. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> Fucking three years ago, Patrice has a low kid. I'm just like, what the fuck is Do you remember the secret niggas? Who even knows anything on this show? Remember when we went to the fake, uh, the Rich Voss fake, he gives a shit about his friend's uh, steak dinner before he got married thing? <laughs> oh, and it was all about him filming his and it was reality all, show and, and pilot? That's, and that's what it was. And it was Patrice and I sat right next to each other and had steak, and we... You're like, man, you're uncomfortable in your skin when you're not in that studio. It, it, it's, it was so... I didn't even... And I'm and I'm wise enough to know not to... That's why when Dennis Leary called a day, I'm... Ve Dennis Leary really does take care of me. From, you know, he'll just throw shit my way. Mm -hmm. But Pat, it's like he likes you, but he has to like you in context of business. It's just no way to let you go, hey, oh, because Obi will, he'll get this thing where he gets human for like a second, and he will <laughs> feel like, wait a minute, I, I'm feeling like, because he'll get it like a, like a, 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 just a drop of conscience where you go, man, this motherfucker gets up, uh, six, he's really, you know, he does, Patrice does a good job for us. I'm just letting everybody know, and you go, yeah, yeah. hey, man. And then I close the shutters back down. <laughs> I, I yeah. open the shutters like that. And they, and they then, come down. So, <laughs> and, insert and another like quarter for a human Because I, I know how, I know, because Anthony doesn't, isn't, you're not the, the guy going, you know, you're not the, you're just doing your show, and then you leave. You put your snorkel coat on, and you're out. Yeah, that's pretty much but it. But Oval look at you, and then, like, he'll go, hey, man. Good job. Hey, listen, uh, Elo loves you, dude. And I and mm. he thinks I'm going, I don't care, but as soon as you go... I want you so, to care, that's so, all. Hey, I mean, Obi, so, uh, see how you got me today? I, this mm. is the first time I ever said, like, well, look, because he always goes, hey, look, what about the, like, the Black Phillip? Hey, man, what's going on with the Black Phillip? I don't ever want to go, what's going on with Black Phillip? Right. Because it's just like, shut your foot. Don't you, you ever want... ask me what the fuck is going on with Black Phillip. Like, I'm just, I just sit here and I go, okay, dude, I'm, no, we wanna, I like doing radio. We really want to develop that now. It's, we think yep. there's something there. We but, think there's something there with, with, with you and this channel. <laughs> like, I, I'm no, so serious. I know, but, then, but the response to that is, all right. Like, I can't go past that. No, honestly, though, all right, I'll be... Because at the end of the show, when the Pac-Man no, music comes, I'm going to go, oh, I gotta tell so you. you got to go, hey, what? It's I got to tell show, you, man, don't talk to without me. saying a lot of things, Eric Logan has been beyond busy since you started that show. It's not the it's not the 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 big priority. Yeah, of course that's not. That's the that's the only reason. That, it, but that's why it should have been done by now. To be honest why, with you, but that's why I never say it's, it's like I know things like that. So it's like I go, okay, cool. But it, it might be like, oh, he doesn't give a fuck, so I'm not worried about. It. But I'm like, nigga, give me the black Phillip shit. But you don't want to go. You don't yeah. want to. You don't want to extend yourself inside because it's. And you're doing it tomorrow night, by the way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight to ten. Because the Black Phillip show is his. 
thing. When we was talking, it's, mm -hmm. it's Opie's idea. So yeah. it's like, you know, okay, fuck it. So I don't want to go, hey, motherfucker, where's well, we your saw... my idea, nigga? No, we saw the angle. Right. We saw the angle and said, you, we got to do this. Shit, I, I'm definitely with that. But, like, you know, shit, I'm, <laughs> you motherfucker. It's like you don't know. I don't know what's going on with this shit. Well, why don't you ask uh, the man? Who's this? Hi, Patrice. Who's this, Eric Logan? No, it's the imposter. Elo, what's up, man? First of all, why is it always uncomfortable silence with white guys and business nah, white guys? You, nah. I got spit it out, you man. Get, you get really Elo. uncomfortable. What is the story? Elo is fake corporate guy. Is he fake corporate guy? He's a, he's a I thought he's a fucking C seventeen. No, no. He really no, no, bugs no, no. me. He's the Listen. LeBron James of white people. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of the smartest guys I've ever worked with. Right. And I'm not kissing his ass because he's on the phone, but he's also a fake corporate guy. He plays the part very well. He's a good actor. Right. When he's not... Yeah, as I... As I when I'm sporting today in my blue jeans and my green Opie and Anthony t-shirt, we're walking around the building today. It's uh, dress down day today. <coughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's casual Hawaiian casual day. shirt day. Oof. Oof. Is there uh, is there room on that shirt for more logos? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's gonna be. It's gonna look like a NASCAR uh, racing Spender. racing outfit. And trust me, Attire. hey, Elo, your name comes to my ears because it's like, Opie will go, hey, man, Elo and the guys in Washington. Like, I, I go, thanks. I, well, all right, like, you know, if I go, thanks. All right, fuck, fuck going through the interpreter, okay? Yeah. Eric Logan, tell, tell him what you tell me. About the show? Just about him in general and how But leave out the right. N-word. No, I said, I said. leave out the fact he said that nigga. <laughs> leave out that. <laughs> well, I mean, I have some health concerns for you. I want to make sure you have a long, healthy life. But other than that, I think the show. Look, the show's great. I mean, I've been talking to Opie about this how long? Um. <laughs> a couple of days. Oh, jeez. Come on now. I told you. See the bullshit. I told you. I'm feeling, I'm feeling I it now. I understand that shit. I told you, Patrice, man. Patrice, I am I've, feeling what you're I've saying now. I've been around, and uh, it's like you understand. You don't want it. That's why I don't say nothing when, when, because Opie thinks I'm, I'm being super cool, man, about the shit. <laughs> but, but, but he goes, hey, man, Elon and guys in Washington said they love you. And I go, well, <laughs> pow, pow, baby, right back at you. Pow, pow. Blah. As I know, I'm walking next to Anthony with a snorkel coat on. <laughs> and going to sleep. I'm feeding my fish, fucking my girl, and uh, not, can't get in touch with Opie when I. Hey, Opie, uh, text messages. Black Philip? Question mark. <laughs> Nigga, please <laughs> don't bug me. <laughs> you get no I reply. Have, I can only work on one thing at a time, Patrice. That's, That's what I was trying to explain. It's fine, dude. I don't get. Look, man. You, uh, you, you know that you're, you're. First of all, you're lying. You do care. That's why. All right, 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 exactly. Right. That's right. I don't care. I, mean, I, I don't care. care. You're fired. But I mean, I don't care. Not in a fuck you way, but it, it, like any, I like just like doing the shit. I don't ever. I don't fucking. I, don't, I just like coming well, in. So let me ask you. Let's 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 talk about it right now. So how many nights a week or days a week or how much time would you be willing to commit to something that you don't care about? What? See, don't put me in a funny spot, nigga. He's... <laughs> well, no. Hey, listen. You called me out of a meeting. I, I was in a meeting working on a thing. Who called you out of a meeting? <laughs> you right? did, Patrice. What? You told me to call Eric Logan. And fuck you, nigga. No, I did. No, the fuck I did. This could be the worst job interview I've ever heard. I didn't call you out of a meeting. What? I'll interview you right now. Let's do this. <laughs> this is the worst job. <laughs> this is a how not to get a job. <laughs> Do not call the boss a nigger. <laughs> Do not say, yo, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just sitting on the radio. I was asleep two seconds ago. And then Wait a minute. Interview. I don't Hold know on. how long I'm going to do this shit. If you're interviewing with the boss, then you shouldn't admit that you actually sleep on the job. <laughs> Oh my this God! Is the God's oh my. honest truth, by the way. We got pictures. I fell is he? Oh! I fell asleep on the floor. I woke up and I lost my. Thank God you're a comedian. Thank uh, God I, I could not I see you work for anybody but yourself. <laughs> All right, Elo. Uh, what? Oh, is that funny? So, Patrice, I won't check your references. I mean, are there any references we could check then? Yeah, Black Phillip. <laughs> the All two right, shows. That's, that's the only thing. The resume it was, on, it was audition. That's the only way. It was audition. really good. People loved it. The right. shows on this uh, and whatever. Uh, typically, when we do like radio show negotiations, I kind of like to know how much time you have to commit to a project. Mm -hmm. I was thinking. I'm thinking one day, three hours of goddamn. Uh, <laughs> okay. Three hours what? of one week. <laughs> okay. The, the, we're making progress now. We're moving forward. Yes. 
what day do you like? I'm looking at Tuesdays. You like I'm Tuesdays. looking at Wednesdays. I'm looking at Saturday. Sunday. I'm looking at Nigga, what am I looking at, Obi? <laughs> Monday. <laughs> Negotiate it. Talk to my lawyer, Obi. <laughs> Monday. Mondays. Monday night. Monday night. What? It should Monday be on. Night, Hold on. Right? The type of program he does should be on uh, the weekend or Sunday night, but the problem is, you know, he will do his touring and stuff, so that's see, a little I, rough. I know, but see, it actually, the type of program that he did on the weekends for us, which was fantastic, should actually be done like on Thursday nights because oh. it's directions about how to survive the weekend with your women and what you should do. Wow, see? Genius move. That's why he's got that gig. Thursday sounds he's good to me. He just trumped He me. just earned his suit right there. Thursday, Thursday sound good to me. Thursday, so you night. like Thursday night? Uh, Thursday sounds excellent. All right, now how do you feel about the show being live or taped? Live? No, it has to be live. Yeah, it has uh, to be live. Taking the calls. Live. We can <clears throat> we can tape the calls. Nah, <clears throat> no, it has to call. Live. There's a live feeling to it's it. That live feel, you kind of know when you're on tape. You don't want to do a taped thing. Yeah. So it's... you want to do? So we have a Thursday night mm -hmm. live show call in. Yes. Now you like three hours? Do that? You want to have like a half hour prep before and do two hours on the air? Do you want to do three hours on the air? I think I, I've done two hours pretty kind of. It, they went by pretty fast. I think I can go three hours. You want to go three hours? Yeah. Uh oh, Bob. Uh, Bob Eatman's on uh, the phone. He wants to uh, <laughs> take over negotiations for Patrice O'Neill. <laughs> no shit. Uh, expect that call. <laughs> Jesus, Bob. Stop spreading yourself so thin. That's why I'm working fast here. Yeah, you're working fast, all right. Look at him move. I mean, this should take like 18 months <laughs> to get this one drawn up. <laughs> this is so fucking by funny. Patrice O'Neill. What did you mean by the word O'Neill? <laughs> Let's get the lawyers involved. Which goes to show you why a lot of motherfuckers go bridge burning. I'll have meetings just like this. Like, yeah. nigga, what are you talking about? Did he just call me nigger? <laughs> okay, I think um the meeting's over. Because I want to go. I want to go look. Because you like it. This, you learn these things. Like you go, man. Aaron's cool. I don't want to negotiate with this motherfucker like a nego It's like, look, you like me? I'm, I want to do this shit. Be fair. Just tell me. You're a little boy. He'll, he'll, a little boy? You're a little boy. But don't get... Listen, you Mr. Gotta... Mr. Goddamn Refrigerator Repairman yesterday. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Try to make me out to be... <laughs> Go back to bed, <laughs> Patrice. <Patricia. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you assholes, man. What's wrong with you, niggas? All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's back to Eric Logan. We're, Elo, we're, yes, we're yes. Off Thursdays, three hours on Thursdays, Eric. Three hours on Thursdays, right? Three hours on Thursdays, yes. Black so now, relationship now, 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 you get, now, here's the things you got to think about. you got to think about the time, because remember, if you do it at 7 o'clock on the East Coast, it's really 4 o'clock on the West Coast. So is that too early for the West Coast? Oh, I see. Hmm. But that's, bef that's drive time, though, right? Yeah, well, then you're going to have a conversation with Opie and Anthony about them coming off drive time, which I'll let you work out with Opie. Oh. Yeah, I don't like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> so can it go nine to twelve on a Thursday, or that's too late? Nine to twelve is is six is six to nine on the West Coast. Mm. That feels kind of right to me. Nine to twelve is. So we want to check with Opie and Anthony to see how they feel about. And that. then if I got to go somewhere right. Friday, I can go. I don't care. Ain't I home by then? Mm. Yeah, but nobody on the West Coast is home. You gotta get. You're giving up. No, I'm talking me personally. <laughs> I can give a shit. <laughs> you got Once I'm home. Yeah, Elo, you gotta understand. <laughs> this is really has nothing to do. With it. <laughs> I listen. If I, I, if I call Anthony and go, man, what do you what do you really think, Anthony? Give me some advice. Nigga, are you calling me at all? Uh, Let me turn off the radio show and and talk to you about uh, it during yeah. the radio. Yeah, <laughs> let me do that. So so that's what I'm saying. So it's like. It, this thing was always going through uh, through Opie, so now it's like, okay, you have to make a decision on Thursday, <clears throat> Thursday 9 to 12, which sounds good to me. East Coast people stay up that late to, you know, do what they do. Anyway, mm -hmm. East Coast is late people. Right. So 6 to 9 for West Coast is a good time for them because they sleep. Uh -huh. They do. They, they don't hang out till fucking 1 in the morning. People in New York hang out till 1 in the morning. Can uh -huh. hang on, talk shit. So, sounds okay. good to me. And then so Friday, Thursday, so you don't have comedy gigs <clears throat> on Thursday. So Thursday nights, you can commit nine to midnight, 
for how many weeks out of the year? Is this a fifty-week deal we're doing here? We're doing yeah. This uh, is every week. This is every, fifty-two and then, weeks a year. One, no, wow. fifty-two no, weeks. No I could do no, yeah. I could do fifty-two weeks, and at the same time, you're helping me out because I don't like to do Thursdays when I do gigs. But I wouldn't have to if I had my own radio show. I can just mm -hmm. go look. I'm only going to do Friday and Saturday, and I can pump my own show on my show and then do that. Trace. Oh, and that changes the economics. Hold, hold on, Elo, Elo, hold, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> you just negotiated yourself out of vacation time. Oh, did I? You just no. I was just. I was no, 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 no. no Elo, Elo. I was going to ask him what he was going to do on Thanksgiving. Yeah, what are you going to do on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Holidays and vacation. <laughs> you just negotiate. I'll be here. I'll be here every week. Is that how it go? <laughs> My client Patrice will be taking four weeks off a year. Four weeks a year and uh, paid uh, uh, holidays when they fall on that Thursday. That's right. And he wants his birthday off. So Thanksgiving, you're good every year. It's Thursday, right? And, right. You're, and you're allowed. But he's commit. But see, the problem he's already committed 52 weeks to me, which means I get 52 shows. So some weeks he's going to have to double up to make up for the difference. Opie, <laughs> Opie, and Anthony will be the sole syndicators of the program, also. So if the, somebody else wants to pick up his show, he gets to syndicate through uh, the Opie and Anthony uh, radio network. Great. So it's another thing. Which we will take fifty percent of the proceeds. I know how silly this is, and you gotta understand, <laughs> fellas. This is this negotiation right here. This yeah. is the reason I'm I I have a, a army of Jews. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Jew this is why army. I do not do my own negotiation. Oh, yeah, it, there'll be a lot of stuff on in the meetings with, with some Jews as goes down. Where Eric said, Eric will go, well, he said this. I'll go, oh, I, I don't remember that shit. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I was playing. <laughs> oh, Patrice will open the door. Hava, Nagila, Hava. They all come in. I come in with a Yama gun. <laughs> what did this stupid Schwarzer say? <laughs> Oi, vey, you're giving away the store. <laughs> I'm down. I'm down, though, Eric. I'm down, man. This is, a, this is a great opportunity for I'm you. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. This is a terrific You're in. opportunity. All right, 52, 52 weeks in. a year. Right, we got it. Okay. Hmm. Now, what about your production staff? I mean, so you're going to cover those expenses for the production staff. Well, I want <clears throat> I actually wanted to snatch these guys. They're good for me. The, uh, okay. the, the so, guys, so, guys. So our fee, so we'll just pay you a fee, and then you'll pay them their fee. And oh. my co-host, co right? And nah. you'll pay your co-host, right? So we'll, our fee that we pay you, you'll just pay for them. You gotta so pay your part. staff. So you're, you're gonna, you're out gonna of your cut. Your own show. No, I don't want to. I didn't say that. You just said that. But I want to pay you my staff. You just agreed to paying your staff no, out of I, your cut. No, I didn't. You just said. Elo. No, no, no. I Where's the money it. coming from for his staff? As I said, and he agreed. I will pay you. You'll pay your staff. Well, I, That's what well, you just I said. I pay you. I'll you negotiate an amount then, right? Well, now you got to negotiate more money because you know you got to yeah. pay your staff. Yeah, I want to pay my staff and my calls. Good thing you didn't do the money first yeah, and then have him right, come across with that. Right, but yeah. I want to go back to this thing about him saying he's going to use three hours on the XM platform to plug his other shows because see now that is barter and trade. So I need. To but that's not. Uh oh, five hundred million dollar <laughs> lawsuit coming up. Is really is that how is that how it's done? I don't know. Look at this motherfucker's gonna out negotiate me. I'm gonna be laying on the ground like I'm gonna be laying on the ground like Jason Part Nine when they when he's boiled down to his little boy phase when he comes out the water. I, I can't fucking all this shit is law shit. I'm just going, man, be fair, nigga. But it ain't like that. So oh, I, gotta, I gotta put my Jews on speed dial. You have to get, this is get your fair. Jews. I'm trying my best, but this is get your Jews is, because you know uh, something. Uh, yeah, there ain't no noose or a tree. But don't think it ain't going on. As long as I'm hey, feeling it. And Elo, I like you, but when I when I put the Jews on it, this is is nothing personal, right? It won't be the first time I've seen him. Okay, no. good enough. That, yeah. <clears throat> that's fair. I'm down. So on a personal yeah, level, you, you need some help because this is like Muhammad Ali, <laughs> Boss, oh. and Chuck Webner. B B Aren't you watching this? Just <laughs> oh, yeah. going, oh, what's he doing? Like I'm seeing him making mistakes. But but Anthony, can you for five seconds <laughs> no, remember? <laughs> That you fixed the coils in 1996? It's a vague memory. And that you, you was, that Opie was doing that to you on there going, you stupid fucking... Snay on the right. Snay on the something, man. Yeah. And uh, you know what You live fuck? and learn. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you learn this stuff. He's like, so I'm, if I open my big... I'm sitting there going, oh, yay. I, so I can... You're doing me a favor by cutting out... I'll you tell know, you one thing like, I never did, ever. What? Was negotiate a deal live on the radio <laughs> without representation. <laughs> That's, that was your first mistake. Because 
because I'm sure there is a lovely digital copy in all its pureness of this discussion. All, it, all this yeah. is really is a, you a, have no a idea digital, right a digital verbal handshake. There you go. You have no idea what you just agreed to. You're obligated now. Uh, what, a digital verbal one? He's going to sue you for damages. There's, 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 there's things called oral contracts. We've yeah. Right. The one That's, yeah. I'm looking. I'm in distress. <laughs> I got diabetes. My head ain't clear. Right. Very good. And you have you haven't pooped. <laughs> I haven't went to the bathroom. Oxy, oxy, oxy powder. Oxy powder. Oxy all cotton, in my, right. <laughs> Oxy's all dripping in my colon. I don't know <laughs> shit, Eric. Hey, uh, Patrice. Yeah. I think we should be friends. Ooh. Oh, okay. I hope he's reaching out. <laughs> I, I'm okay. reaching out. Okay, till tomorrow. <laughs> no, I think we're going to be friends. Let's go see a movie or something. Have you seen Scary Movie 4 yet? I want to see I, that. I saw it the other day. I got cut out of it. I was Didn't supposed to be in it. Oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, I got cut out of it. Oh, I, shit. I got cut right out of it, right which wasn't a out. super bad thing. How do you get cut out? Aren't Is the movie bad? Like... I, it's maybe the third, money. the third or fourth. I don't want to disrespect because the people like me, but it, it, yeah. it could be. Could have been that. <coughs> Patrice, one Patrice one what yeah. if we did this? What if I represented you and I negotiated with XM? Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's something you never want to hear. Why? Aren't you XM? <laughs> well, I can, rec I can remove yeah. myself from this Jesus. equation. Oh. So, yo, so listen, I, I, already, I already got By the way, some. Hold I on. already have a few hold of on, the on, chosen people in place. Hold on. Eric Logan uh, is obviously joking there. But it reminds Bruce me Mittman. of Bruce Mittman in Boston. <laughs> we were uh, we were starting to get some popularity, and Aunt and I were looking at each other like we're making no money. Aunt was living in a uh, at a chicken farm. <laughs> I was living in an apartment building with Brazilians that owned chickens. <laughs> chicken farm. <laughs> Where the kids were like using the. Was you a cockfighting referee too? In a chicken farm. The kids would, would use the potholes <laughs> as a, as a pool. Right. This is how yeah. poor the place was that he lived. Yeah. In. When it rained, the little Brazilian kids would come out in the big potholes in the uh, parking lot and play like it was a pool. This is when you was on the radio in Boston. Yeah, in, in Boston. With your with your wife. Yeah. And, and yeah. Patrice, remember? Uh, well, remember. I don't know why I would say that, but uh, in some of these apartment complexes, you got shared space. Mm -hmm. These people would take it upon themselves to take the shared space and make it their space so they could raise. Chickens. You get patios. You know the patio with the wrought iron little fence around it in the back of an apartment building? Oh, you got to put God. your little hibachi on? Well, these guys would go over the patio and fence it off with chicken wire to the and load chickens to the woods. in. And load chickens in. And you'd hear... And, and they'd, they'd have chicken barbecues. Anyway, they'd just cut the chicken up right there. So we were in no shape financially whatsoever. And we're doing great for uh, you know Boston uh, AF and Boston Radio in general. We're blowing up. And uh, so we start uh, we start hinting that we we maybe need an agent because it was negotiation time, yeah. You know, and the Chinese restaurant uh, mm -hmm. thing that yeah. we talked about earlier, yeah. Yep. And Bruce Mittman, <clears throat> who was the general manager of WAF, he ran the whole show for that radio station. Actually, said to us that if we don't need an agent. He'll negotiate the deal yeah. for us. And we're like, but we're negotiating against you. Right. But it's you. Right. You're the guy. So as Eric Logan said, <laughs> well, who joke, knows right. me better than me? As, yeah, right. As he says, I'll that cut as, myself with my deal. I will outwit myself. This actually happened to us. I'm like, but but you're the guy. We're trying to get more money from. I'm, I am and, dumb, and but I ain't well, stupid. It's, it's, yeah. Look how it ended. It worked out well for us. Guys, I was trying to screw you over, but I picked up on it. <laughs> 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 I just realized that I am a hardcore bastard. I'm hard. This is going to go on for quite a while, yeah, boy. Uh, so Bruce, uh, when is this deal going to be signed? You know, uh, I'm not, I'm not done arguing with myself. I'm not done arguing. <laughs> uh, I, I, we're stuck on something I believe could be a deal breaker, boy. <laughs> uh, and I'm not budging on it, but I, I think I could get me to budge. And I gotta admit, this negotiation is getting personal. I just told myself <laughs> that I was a midget, <laughs> and I wasn't happy that I actually told myself I'm, a, I'm a midget. So I'm fighting back. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Brucey, man. He fucking um, actually thought that would fly. I how do you not love that guy? Guys. How do you not love a guy with a set of balls like Brucey Holy Mittman? Holy shit. <laughs> I got really blindsided with, with yeah. big big business. Big big guy just, in a suit on the phone. I just saw the Enron tapes and thought I knew about business. <laughs> I just, Patrice. So yeah. like, and then you go, hey, man, we get the syndication. I'm sitting there going, I really do feel like oh. I should have been oiled down and a motherfucker oh, should have yeah. been selling me. Patrice. Forget about it. <laughs> I'm going to step out of my role on the show. Uh-huh. Oh, there he goes. He actually stepped. Okay. I okay. do believe that you're very talented. And it's just time to make you a part of this fine uh, channel. All right. And I think uh, you having a show every week would be terrific for everybody involved. Yes. And also with uh, Jimmy blowing up in Hollywood and he's going to have to, like, you know, film a second season of Lucky Louie. 
you know, mm -hmm. we want to make you happy as you sit there. Yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. So it's up to Eric Logan to do the right thing. Yeah. Make the deal. Somehow. So I guess I'm not the. So am I to understand I'm not the agent now? It, it sounds like I'm not the agent. No, you're. You cannot Something just be went the horribly agent. wrong. Yeah, you can't. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you cannot. <laughs> I, I just stepped. Shyster. I just stepped. I just stepped back into my role on the show. I saw you took the step. There'll be some motherfucking old school Moses Jews from Jerusalem coming to life. You and I need did that. some some representation. Oh, yeah, they're good. They're or else good. you're gonna look like you're in a bathroom with a lacrosse. That's, ex <laughs> that's, ex that's exact. That's exactly. I just. I just. Yeah. Do things like that, like, I, like I told you, the the, the Spike Lee situation. It's just mm -hmm. like, what? Why would you call? It's like if if see what just happened just now. Yeah. If I said, okay, talk to talk to my people, and and Eric was like, hey, look, man, come on, we talk, Patrice. I know no, you. Can't. Come on, let's just talk. It's like, don't you? Let's talk about life. Let's talk but about just, art, but yeah. do look, not we, talk business no, we, with me. You and I right. can just work this out together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, when you hear that, yeah, run. Right. Here's what you do. You do, give a little self-deprecation. You go, you go like, hey, Eric, you know, I would love to discuss this, but I'm just not savvy enough, right. and I've been instructed that maybe somebody else should handle these affairs for no, me did, did to you protect say, no, myself. Did, did you say or pretend you to say that? Yeah. Or Patrice, or you can give me the line that Anthony gives me, which is like, I'm only one half of the equation. Let That's me what I say. I've actually used, I am but a small cog. <laughs> yeah, actually, that was the one I got I, the other night. I, you, last I night, I think I gave yeah. uh, Elo that one. Yeah. I am but a small cog in this machine, Elo. You have made, the, you have made uh, what's the name for that, that sign? Ampersand. The ant. The, ampersand. You made the ampersand worth millions <laughs> <laughs> with that move right there. That ampersand yeah. is worth. It's like, way, look, man. Oh, yeah. I, hey, don't you know? The, it's Opie and Anthony. By the I'm way, sorry, I can't talk. By to By the you way, yet. I got to tell you this also. I only passed that off to Opie because I knew he was asleep and had his phone off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, I'm back in my role on the show. Oh. Right. I don't have time to see a movie anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I. Do you know what we have going on? Are you insane? Do you actually think I could see a movie with you anytime soon? You got a time to take a piss. Do you think that I get set up by Opie's in and out of of humanity? <laughs> He's the only one that has called me out on it. Oh, I will right. never get everyone else. Everyone no. else, like Bob Kelly, will sit here and go. But, but he was but, my friend. But what happened? I, like he can't figure it out. Like he's. But 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 when the mics are on, he he actually. But what? <laughs> You're the it, only one that will call me out on it. Obi goes, hey, dude, let me tell you something. I see you have, let me tell you something, XM203 is in your future. That will be called the O'Neill Network. I go, yeah, man, skilly bow. He goes, what's the matter with this guy? He just looks I know, tomorrow, it's like, I, it's, I know, it's, oh, I just wait. That's what, every time Obi goes, but Elo, I'm telling you, dude, when he goes, he says that, I go, okay. I, today, I said, today, said, so should I, should I, I mean, is he going to call or should I talk? And he turned it into this. He turned yeah. it into bad Negro negotiations. <laughs> there are black lawyers and black, this NAACP oh. is going, this dumb nigga, I'm going to get a call from They Barack are on their Obama. way. <laughs> the NAACP. What the fuck is wrong with you? They got like a car with a siren on it right now, blazing down to this location. <laughs> Negotiate with white nigga, men. Nigga, shut the and, fuck up. And, and saying how I'm going to go get my Jews to help me. <laughs> I really am the Terrell Owens of third mic. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, but there's a positive phone oh, call shit. coming in for me. Timmy in Boston. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, hey man. Uh, I wanted just to say that Opie, who used to not be the funniest guy on the show, mm -hmm. over the last week or whatever, has been very, very fucking funny. Tell my and boss, tell my boss he's on with you right Bravo. now. Well, that's why I wanted to call in, because... With the whole Bruce Mittman thing, when he was saying, I'm going to negotiate with myself, and I, you know, all that stuff. It was very fun. <laughs> you got out of him what you needed. <laughs> that was a very Thank fun you, thing to do, it. though, man. Yeah. So, Patrice, Patrice? Yes, sir. Yeah, we got to wrap up because they're saying we got to take a break, a really long yeah, break or something. So, Patrice, I, don't know, so I just want to recap the deal as it currently stands because it's very important in negotiations, so you always know where we stand, right? Go ahead. All right, you've agreed to a show uh, on Thursday nights from 9 p.m. That is a night. definite agreement. Okay. Okay. Very no, no, good. No, there's, no, there's no definite. We've already agreed this. We have tape of you saying yes to yeah, all it's, but it's, it's like a contract. But also, please, you don't even have to reiterate. Let me, let me say right, that. I'm just restating what you've already agreed. Please don't let me go to the doctor and say that I suffer from dementia. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Do as you will. <laughs> Patrice is fighting back. You're, you're, doing 50, you're doing 52 shows. <laughs> 52? What? 52 <laughs> shows over the year, though, is what he's saying. But 
Thanksgiving. Oh. Thanksgiving, you were. No, no, no. But I'm saying, Dude, wait till you're 30 shows in. You're gonna be like, what fi- the fuck? 52 like, shows. I'm out of shit. <laughs> so, you, know so that, you, just, you know that? You know that we you, invent illnesses you, to get you, time off from this program. <laughs> you've, you've agreed to pay out of your pocket all production expenses associated with the show. Oh, you shouldn't have given that one up, Patrice. I didn't agree to that. You have to, re- you. You have to renegotiate that. You, I didn't agree to pay. Patrice. I agree that, that the guys will get paid. Yeah, but you not yeah, only you? agreed to it, you agreed to it twice. I heard it. Twice you agreed really? to it. All right, go you ahead. Back that shit up. Go ahead. The all, worst that can all, happen is you fall apart. You know, <laughs> when you brought up the fact that you want to plug your show on Friday night, I clearly articulated that that is, we as XM has to be compensated. You have to be compensated. So, so either you will do the show for free or you will pay us the fair market value for such mentions included no. in that show. You know, Elo, free is ridiculous. I agree. And also, I, I need an accounting of what uh, spots are going for on Absolutely. this show, I and we will work out a dollar right. figure for you that and put typically. that against what uh, Patrice will be earning. Let me wow, ask you, you two. A lot of let me ask you, let me ask you two. Uh, hey, Anthony, Anthony, thank you very yes. much. Okay, now, what about times we, where I'm not I'm not performing on the weekend? Uh huh. Well, then you don't mention it, and then you don't have to reimburse us for right. that. And then, and so if I don't mention it, I don't. And have we to. still expect you to be here when Jimmy's not here, sitting in that seat for free. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Oxy's and coming then, out my ass. <laughs> How about and then, that? And then, as, he's as walking on the, wait, he's just walked out on the negotiation. I'm going to call a Jew right now, nigga. He's going How about that? The negotiation is over. I'm going to shit. He's going to the Jew phone. He's out. Well, also, the, the one last he thing just left. Before we hang up, well, you got to remember. That ex- it's customary that we have control of your image and marketing rights that we can use, and you can't use them without the express written permission of XM. That's very standard with all of our deals, too. There you go. You'll be hearing from somebody with the last name of Witz. Or Stein. Or Stein. Well, enough about Patrice. So it's it's about us today. Uh, what's going on in Washington <laughs> as far as, you know, the <laughs> thing? Oh, oh, you got me with that one. Let's do it! For, for the love of humanity, <laughs> what did the guy do wrong? He took a goddamn job. It seemed like a good idea. To and the guy didn't do oh. well to him. <laughs> and, and like, oh my god, what is going oh, on here? No, it is. My, wow, you know, Danny, it looks right on you. Oh, holy shit. Why are you doing your Charlie Chaplin impression today? <laughs> oh, is that Charlie Chaplin? <laughs> Why? Who, well, who do I think it is? Who says it has to be the big guy? I, I'm saying it's a Charlie Chaplin. I, I they uh, it was mustache day. What you call today. Him, the big guy? <laughs> the big guy. The big guy. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the big guy. You got a you got a nickname. We didn't even wish him a happy birthday yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting looks of dismay. He's talking about Phil, who emailed. It was a whole yeah. thing, and we forgot to mention mm-hmm. this. Well, that is really something. You, what? It you actually, know, it actually <laughs> looks good. That's too bad. He fucking Danny fucked up kinda, that mustache. We it's talked talked almost, that it t- works with Danny in a weird way. It almost it, it looks cool. We it's almost like a Clark that. Gable look. He, he it fucked it up you. for everybody. He fucked that up because that really, really kind of yeah, fits yeah, him in a weird way. People grow, uh, there's a lot of people that grow facial hair because they're trying to make their face a little better. What if that's the only thing that makes your face better? And that guy, like, took, <laughs> that guy took that move, that move out of the game. Well, you have a weird, uh, a weird mole <laughs> or a funny cleft. Right. And the, all you just want is enough to just, just cover up, up a, a cover, but up not a the corners cliff. of your mouth. Well, d- it, it has been mustache day. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't uh, play along, Ovi, because of the press and everything. Uh, uh, we don't want to sit in front of them with wacky mustaches. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of the press, uh, right after the show, right outside the studio. It's going to be unbelievable. Oh, really? Got a mic on the street and everything. Let's check in to see what's going on with the press All outside right. the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds, uh... Wow. How what? are we going to deal with that? I don't know. Going to need Poe to escort us through the crowd. Yeah. Uh, mustache day. He looks sexy. He looks like a silent film villain. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like silent film... It, it, it worked. I don't know how a Hitler mustache works for you, Danny, but it really does. Well, I guess that's a compliment in some way. It you, could you be. You should keep it, and you should. It's a no. little. It's a little. <laughs> you should but keep he, it. he should. He should like just shape it up a little, make it look, you know, 
2006 shaped up. How do you futurize you know, the Hitler mustache? And I gotta tell you, Travis didn't want to. Uh, he did not want to. You didn't want to commit. You're a little too far. He didn't want to commit to the style. Yeah, you could have gone closer commit. to the nostrils. No, it's supposed to be pretty much nostril equal nostril. with the e edges of your nostrils. What a yeah. Surprise, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's, I, I don't know. Where's Jim Norton? Yeah, not committing to it. You are really just wishy-washy. Uh, so we, we couldn't give up on it, because after we knew the bit was kind of dead, we had already been growing out our, <laughs> our awful beards for like a week and a half, so we figured we'd just run with it. Yeah. No, we'll throw it up on the website, and we'll uh, we'll join Mustache Day ourselves in the, Any, in the very uh, near future. I like it, huh? It's really kind of it doesn't bother alarming me. How, how it fits you. You know why? Because it's, it's kind of suave, but it, it see, it, the, the big guy's mustache was completely you kind of, Wait a minute. Square. You kind of yeah. tapered. You gave the edges almost a... Uh, a wing, like a, yes. a delta wing, kind of. Both taper. guys were scared to that completely could be, commit. That could be the way to update that look and bring That's that mustache what I'm back. Is to, You're right, Patrice. Is to, is to triangle it up a Give little bit. Give it an bit. angle. It's a trapezoid. Yes. yes. You gave ah. it more of a trapezoid than a rectangle. Hitler's was completely rectangular. Like square, like a rectangle. Yeah. On his face, yours is going down in the mustache way. If you trimmed it up, it, it would it would be like I said, a Clark Cable kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't shooting for that. I really did try we'll to make this as offensive as possible. We'll test it at the synagogue. Ooh! On our first day. No, I guess we won't. <laughs> <laughs> Saying that I have the the spacely sprockets mustache. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Well, I don't think that'll be on the old Photoshop to later on today. All right, we should. Uh... Yeah. What? What? What are you doing? Well, Travis said, "Let's go shave," and I, I concurred. All right, go shave. There you go, the guys. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Let's go to the phone and say hi to Bruce in Arkansas. Bruce, what's up today? Well, Bruce. yeah, today I learned that uh, Anthony Arafat was a refrigerator repairman yesterday, <laughs> and Sean Arafat. Hannity doesn't understand the mustache day. There Punch you go. Hey, yeah, we did learn that. Uh, ben, uh, no, ben Stein is uh, asking Patrice a question. Uh, whatever. Uh, ben Stein. Uh, well, there's Ben Stein, and then there's Ben's raw ass, who just said Ben Stein. So, Ben's Raw Ass, why don't we start with you? Go ahead. All right. Today I learned that Anthony's hair is commonly referred to as mattress stuffing. <laughs> well, commonly or once today. <laughs> once today. I commonly, yes. referred. I commonly referred to hey, once say, ever. He didn't say he was a good student. No. <laughs> Miss Cloning. This business is the worst. Thanks. But that's what he learned. Patrice always calls it mattress stuffing hair. No, I didn't. I just said yeah. that particular look, picture on look, the phone. The first time you he heard mattress stuffing hair was 1965. <laughs> as a child <laughs> growing up. In... <laughs> That's what he learned, I never though. heard mattress well, stuffing hair. But when he... I've heard a lot of other things, believe me. When we give him the pop quiz, he's going to get an F, but that's what he thought he learned. Commonly known. That's one of the news things that they use. I know. This one is commonly known as, yeah, because he said it tonight. You're a liar. Ben Stein, what's up? Good morning. Are you, uh, Patrice O'Neill, are you trying to Jew Elo down? Wow, is that a bad Ben Stein impression? That's, oh, is he? Yeah, he's trying oh, to okay. do it. Right. Let's go to uh, David from Virginia Beach. David. Yeah, I wanted to play uh, what I learned today. Yeah. Uh, I learned that uh, after Thanksgiving, I'm going to be able to listen to Patrice. <laughs> Punch it out, boys. Yes. <laughs> Patrice will be working while I'll be eating. <laughs> That's how it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, fellas, I just want to say, I'm sorry. I just want to do my last, hey, how you guys doing? Everything all right? Because when this music stops, people are out of here just like Pac-Man. <laughs> you know what this show is like? During the show, it's like you ate the blue, the, all the ghosts of blue, and we're chasing the ghost. Right. Afterwards, after the fucking music, Run for we're it. back to Pac-Man, getting out of the escape hatches on the side. Eating the dots down 57th <laughs> Street. All all eye contact stops. <laughs> well, well, that was fun. Uh, 
Yeah. We start talking in our real voices and everything. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> fuck you, Inky Dinky and whatever the fuck. Hey, you. Ed, man, I really love your Schwarzenegger impression. Really, motherfucker? <laughs> well, <Yeah. laughs> see you next month when I do That's it again. That's great. Where's the fucking <laughs> elevator? <laughs> Why do I gotta stand and talk to this guy? Let's go to Ben. Another Ben. Ben, what did you learn on the show today? It's Ben Day. Hey, what's up? Man? What's up, man? I learned that four Jews be, uh, beats a full house. <laughs> yes. There you go. We did in Howie cards. Uh, Terrence. Uh, yeah, it's Terrence. I learned today that uh, Patrice knows how to bend over in front of Eric Logan and take it up the ass. Well, All you right. know what? I can't even lie about that. Jared in Boston. Hey, I learned that you can be racist, but don't be mean. On to now. <laughs> Let's go to Steve in New York. Steve? Yeah, today I learned that Howard just don't care. Yeah, we're, we're going to see how much he doesn't care in the coming weeks. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> oh, wow, you actually went off the script with oh, yeah, Steve I'm sorry. taking that call. I, I, I was feeling brave. Yeah. I said, what the hell? Hey, uh, Patrice O'Neill, thanks uh, very much. Yeah, no problem. Tomorrow right. night on this fine channel, uh, 8 to 10. Black Phillip, yes, sir. Check it's it a, out. Love advice. It's a great show if you haven't checked it out yet. It really is. And uh, oh, we'll see all you questions Monday. answered Monday.